First off, we'll say hello to all of the listeners on Frogbox. We're fully up and away now after some technical difficulties in the uh, previous game, but uh, we look like we're uh, good to go so far. But, yeah, the Windies, look, I think you go into a test match like Adelaide, they got rock and rolled early on. Yep. It was probably not the pitch they were looking for. Australia were probably just happy to be out there with a red ball. I think the pink ball has something to do with it here as well. Yes, they lost a few wickets early on, but one that, once they once that ball got soft, it was just perfect batting conditions for the Windies. And it's probably Nathan Lyon. I think I think I said think said it best last night when he came off the field. He said, "This is a perfect red ball wicket." Mm. I don't. Look, I, I think I understand the see, the reasons why we got what we got with the, how the season unfolded. But if you're going to have an Adelaide test, it should really be the pink ball test. It's interesting because the Adelaideans are liking the day and everybody's all of a sudden mm. going, well, where do we go day night? Brisbane, oh, that's a love in the, the day night. They had a great crowd last night, 26 thou. Today they're going to get easily 30-something and they are loving it out there, the conditions. But... I want to talk about this Australian side because, to me, I just don't think this has been a great summer by the Australian side. Look, they're going to win every test match, potentially. That's great. But I've seen a lot of moments in the Australian game as a drop catch as we speak. I think, is that green that's dropped it? Sinclair Lucky, he's on 30 of 63 rocks. Cummins, it was a, a whitish ball. Sinclair was chasing. It was dropped by green. But this is what I'm talking about. There's been moments where either drop catches by the Aussies or just ill-timed innings as all. When we expect their bowling team to just completely rip apart the opposition, they haven't this year. I've been disappointed with the Australians because, really, they're the world champs. And a lot of people ask the question, why is this team not loved and all that? We can talk about all the (laughs) off-field stuff later. But on the field, I don't think they're a great team, a complete team. To be exact, they play well in specs and specs, and that's when they win the matches. But they don't put a complete performance in, if that makes sense. Well, I think they're trying to just be something they're not. Like for me, picking Steve Smith as an opener is sort of a bit of a cop out in my mm. in my opinion. Because as I said, you should be picking the best two openers to open. Yeah, you can always make a case about your best six batters and you make it work, but. Is the Steve Smith experiment going to work? Didn't really in Adelaide. It didn't matter too much because the bowlers got the job done. But here, if the Windies get 300 plus, which the way it's going, nothing stopping them getting over 300, particularly if they keep dropping off like Green just did. It, it's going to come to the point where he's going to have to perform at the top of the order. And if he doesn't, what, what happens then? Yeah, we, we need to see Smith get some runs in this test match. We... Oh, waiting for the Windies to get out. It's amazing. That that last night, watching that mm. second session, the way they just dig their heels and said, you know what, we are going to do something. They were five down for about 40-odd, and you thought, okay, looks like this test is over in a couple of days. And then all of a sudden, the two young fellas who, which was a shame that we didn't see the 100, but they still played their hearts out, both uh, Hodge and also De Silva. Great innings is by both. And you just got the feeling this might be the confidence the Windies needed for their test cricket. I know they've got big issues politically. They've had big issues with their board for a long time. But the players are getting a lot of money to play in these T20 competitions. They've got to play. And I know this is a question we can talk about later on. But is it time for a window for test cricket? Or an international cricket full stop? Well, it's going to have to get to that point. Obviously, India make a priority for their for their um, for their IPL. Australia want their cake and eat it too, and will run South their Africa tests. Africa got their yeah. team there taking sent, the New Zealand. Yeah, and Australia are just happy to have their cake and eat it too, as they um, as they run the Big Bash and Test cricket side by side. Look, I think we'll get to the point where they'll have to do something. Even if it's you go down the rugby route and you have your specific T20 players versus your Tests and One Day players, I don't like mind that. rugby sevens, you have your particularly rugby seven players and you have your 15 man game. Have your players that are on a T20 circuit, then they have they have an international window where they play World Cups, etc. But then if you're not in part of that, then you play your Tests and your One Dayers. 
just quickly before we get to the action that's about to start the big issue with this window thing is who gets the summer because Australia, New Zealand, South Africa all want a portion of the summer. It's going to be a big issue with that. Mm. And New Zealand have kicked up a stink. South Africa's kicked up a stink. These are the Boxing Day test matches. Anyway, let's get into it. Yep. Sydney and Campbelltown Camden in the final. Kiwi Mick Rainish and Matty Mears. Take it away, boys. Yes, the final has come and Sydney Tigers will be batting first at the creases. Sammy Joe Johnson, right-handed batter. Jody Hicks at the non-strikers end will be Lauren Cheadle to open up the bowling for Campbelltown Camden. Sydney Tigers wearing their predominantly black strip with the yellow numbers. Campbelltown Camden predominantly dark green with yellow. So this is what it's all about now. Both teams coming off convincing semi-final wins earlier in the day. So they'll both be very confident. We're looking for a 3.45pm start here for the final was scheduled for 3.30, but they just needed a little bit of a time off between the matches, which is fair. And both very convincing winners in the semis. It's a left arm bowler here on Lauren Cheadle, and it'll be the key wicket of Sammy Jo Johnson. First ball of the final, and a little bit edgy as she drives it into the offside, but it will be a single. So first run of the final, the Tigers no wicket for one. Yeah, much better start than what we saw with uh, Stella Campbell. Uh, in the game previous to this one, but they'll have to know here the uh, the Sydney Tigers that they're going to not get that accelerated start. They're not going to get those quick and easy runs. We've seen Cheadle um, in the Australian setup only a month ago. She's going to be right on on the mark here early on. Oh, and swung in beautifully. What fielding in the covers? That was sharp as a knife. Sarah Coit, great fielding there. That was smashed at her. Very good fielding. No run. Well, yeah, we've seen Sarah Coit in the big bash for New South Wales. Certainly someone that, yeah, be lurking in that cover position. Um, not one that you could hit, hit, just hit and run to. Even just the setup there, just yeah. prowling into the batter. Cheadle now to Hex. Another good delivery. This is good tight stuff straight away. Campbelltown Camden, of course, in that semi-final earlier. St. George Sutherland getting 118. And they chased it, getting one for 119 of 16.4 overs. Of course, Anika Leroy, 90 runs. So, and she opened up the batting for Campbelltown Camden. We'll be seeing her a bit later. Shaping up for a real close one, you would think. Here goes Cheeto again. And nice little shot round the corner to fine leg by Hicks. Beautifully played. No wicket for two. Oh, right. Um, you're here too, Callum. Callum, I was from being a Sunday ninja. Night. I was being a bit of a ninja and trying to be stealthy, but you've <laughs> caught me out. I was just going to make just passing comment again about my favourite topic, the weather. The breeze does seem to have died down a little bit. Yep, it does. So should make, uh, should be better playing conditions out there. Oh, swing and a miss outside the off stump. She's got this ball moving around. Lauren Cheadle, there's two quality players going head to head right now. One ball left in the first, no wicket for two. Yeah, just seeing the, the way the left arm over from Lauren Cheadle wing conditions certainly helping uh, just angle the ball back into the right hand batters it can just give you that little false sense of security if you think it's wide outside off you're going to have enough room to cut it just moves back in or just not quite where you think it's going to be by the time you're going to hit it and this one driven to mid off bit of a juggle there they're going to pick up one they might even chance a second no they'll just settle for the one so a good first over here by Campbelltown Camden Sydney Tigers no wicket for three. Yeah, and the um, and if you look at the players, you can definitely see that they're stunned that the Campbelltown have been very much enjoying the break that they've had. They'd of course been taking notes of um, the previous game that we watched, Sydney v Northern District. So they'll be wanting to try and wear them down, wear wear them down now before they before it's their turn to get up and to get on the uh, on the bat batting field. Yep, that's right, and it's going to be Elizabeth Barquette to open up the bowling at the other end from our commentary end of the ground. Bowling 
some spin. Sammy Joe Johnson takes guard. So Sammy Joe Johnson two off three. Hicks one off three. Hope you're enjoying the coverage on Triple H and Frogbox, of course. Yeah, what also yeah, also uh, Macquarie Sports, uh, MacArthur Sports Radio. Yep. Your local team here in the in the Campbelltown Camden Ghosts. So yeah, we, we appreciate everywhere that we're uh, on board this afternoon. Hawkesbury as well. As I said, just keep rattling them off. <laughs> <laughs> so here goes Elizabeth Barcat. Good crowd has stayed throughout the day here. It's just cooled off. It was really hot about lunchtime. A little bit of a leg spinner. And they're going for a run. Oh. Yep. Pushes that down the ground for a single. No wicket for four. Yeah, just not quite the pace I think that uh, Sammy Joe was looking for on that one and had to wait for it to get to the bat. Not something you're probably used to um, being a representative player, but uh, could catch these batters out, particularly if it just doesn't quite come to them as quick as they're expecting. Hicks on strike. This is shorter. Just leans back and pushes it into the offside for no run as the sun breaks through here at Cricket Central. Maybe it's going to heat up again here in this match, the weather, temperature. So here goes Barcat again. It's a bit wide that one. It is a wide and they're going to run a few as well. Looks like they'll come back for a second, which means, no, in fact they're not. I think they really should have. But that'll be two runs. Yeah, I think they're just not quite used to this quick outfield like we've got here at Cricket Central. It's almost like carpet. I said generally with ones like that, particularly if they get a ricochet off a fielder, they usually slow down pretty quickly. But yeah, definitely I think there was two runs there for the Tigers. Sammy Joe Johnson on strike. Hits this one to mid off for no run. This is a good tight start to a final. Wonder what sort of a target they'll be looking for. Of course, they got 147 in their semi-final, which was just completed against Northern Districts when they batted first in that match. Here goes Barkat again. Goes down the ground, smashes it down the ground, and that's all the way for a half a dozen of the best. What a great six. And we'd have a great view of that on Frogbox coming through as it's smashed down the ground all the way. No mucking around in the final here for Sammy Joe Johnson. Brings it through to no wicket for 12. What a great shot that was. Advancing to the spinner. Cleared the rope by about 30 metres as she runs in again. Goes down the ground. Pushes it into the onside. No run this time. So she's trying to use her feet to the spinner here to break up the length of the bowler. As uh, Barkhead about to bowl the last of the second with these right arm spin deliveries. Goes down the ground again, oh. doesn't quite time it, but it might roll between the fielders for a four. No, they pull it off on the fence. They'll come back for a couple. Good start here by the Tigers again. Two overs gone. No wicket for 14. That was a very good swing there, wasn't it? Yep, definitely. And Sammy Joe Johnson looking to lead the way. Yeah, I think they know they need to take advantage of the power play when the, only the two fielders outside the circle. That's the reason they have Sammy Joe at the top of the order. You see, he normally comes in in those middle overs for New South Wales, mm. but... Where does she bet for them, like number five or something? even sort of six or seven or eight but oh. I've seen more as a bowling all-rounder at New South Wales level but but he definitely can uh, put some opening bowlers off their mark with some big hitting. Cheeto again now to Hicks. Great shot through the covers that's a brilliant shot for four. Rolls along the carpet here at the beautiful facility of Cricket Central and that's a cracking boundary the Tigers are on their way it's no wicket for 18. Yeah, that's just a, a lovely shot there. There's not a huge gap there between sort of extra cover and cover point. And it was uh, Hicks showing all of experience to get that ball through. And uh, as I said, no one out there on the boundary due to the only the two fielders out and uh, just rocketed to the rope. Cheeto again. Oh, chance of an LBW there. She's gone. Umpire gives the, the batter out. 
And that was a beautiful in-swinging delivery. Hits high on the pad. But it would have taken the top of those stumps. And it's a wicket that Campbelltown Camden needed. The Tigers won for 18. Well, while we're... Um while they're getting a water break and regrouping and everything, it's uh, worth mentioning that the uh, international test cricket has started up at the Gabber in Brisbane. Um, and uh, I have to say there was a fact on the screen. Did you know that the West Indies have got the longest uh, batting streak for a summer test match cricket series this year? Okay. Um, it's currently eight for 200, sorry, 295 for eight. I'm, 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 you're converting me into Australian. I, I don't know why you see that as a bad thing, but uh, it was a good piece of bowling by Cheadle using this new ball to her um, pedigree where we just see that left, those left arm overs, mm. almost Mitchell Stark-like if you can Trent get Bolt that swing even. back. Yeah. Trent Bolt's in that, uh, in that Spencer Johnson, if we want to go yeah, to the big bash Yeah, how But not if you're a Sixers fan, but yeah. just, yeah, curling it back in, just... Uh, bit more extra swing on that one maybe a little bit of assistance by this strong breeze but uh they're the ones that uh you'd be thinking about as a left arm over bowler just pitching in line swinging back gonna take the top of middle and off and first we get down here for the tigers eva rag at the wicket now right-handed batter oh and that swung in again beautifully but flicked off the pads behind square for a single good start to this match one for 19 now, the Tigers in the third over. The sun beating down here at Cricket Central now as the cloud cover has just broken away. Pretty much a lot of blue sky now for this final. But certainly a lot cooler than what it was if you go back a couple of hours when it was uh, 40 degrees yeah. and overcast. Um, the, second... sun, the sun clearing clearing the um, sky. Sorry. Ooh. And this is a, another great delivery as it swung in. What a battle here with Cheetah and Sammy Joe Johnson. Takes her on the thigh guard and rolls away for a leg by. But the swing in there that she's getting, she's using that breeze to her advantage. Which, uh, you know, you can when you're a swing bowler. Adds to it even more. I think both teams... Are, am I, I'm right in thinking here, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, gentlemen, but... Uh, Am I right in thinking that both teams are equally matched here in terms yep. of their um, in terms of their qualities in terms of their qualities? Yeah, it's pretty even. And this one again, just hooping around and hitting her on the sort of tummy area, really. One for twenty, and it's actually third against fourth, isn't it, in this final? So third and fourth have made it through to the final on the ladder. Yeah, that's how close this uh, women's yep. premier cricket competition is. Um, as I said, particularly as you get teams affected by representative players being away, how good are the, the players that are coming in to replace them, etc. Obviously on a day like today you're going to get as many of them as available down here as possible. Cheeto again to rag. Glides it. Very good block. To point. No run. Three overs gone here. Sydney Tigers, one for 20. The final of the Kingsgrove T20 Women's Competition. Yeah, yeah, but as I said, it's more than just going to be the 11 out here. There's a, a lot of players would have contributed throughout the competition to get them there. And it's probably something that, that in, in this sort of level, you'd love to have more of your rep players. But obviously, as the WBBL, as um, the WNCL, etc. expand, they're going to see less and less of those New South Wales players. And it's going to be those next sort of people coming off the rank to come in and replace them that's going to show how these clubs are going but when you look at some of the teams that aren't here today that we've called um, throughout the season I said there are a lot of a lot of talent and a lot of good clubs that could be could have been here if maybe one or two results went their way so Elizabeth Barcat to bowl now Sammy Joe Johnson 11 off 9 Elizabeth Barkett, her first over went for 11. Right arm spin. Dances down the wicket, smashes it down the ground. A couple of bounces into the fence for four. Sammy Jo Johnson is saving her big innings here for the final. The way she has started, she's taking on the spinners, dancing down the wicket. That's a cracking shot. We've been talking about how, the, uh, how women's sports have been experiencing an uptick. I wonder how much of that is... Um related to the fact that we hosted the Women's Football World Cup last year. Mm. 
And oh, that was oh. an edgy one. If there was a first slip, it would have been gone. It's going to roll towards the boundary, but it's about 10 metres short, and they'll run through for a couple. You're right, though, definitely the Women's Soccer World Cup. It was the biggest rating events in, in, in history on free to air television for yeah, that. Yeah, and I think and I think you'd also go back to the T twenty World Cup in twenty twenty where yep. eighty eight thousand for the final at the MCG. Yep. Sammy Joe Johnson on strike. Dances down the wicket but just holds up on the shot. Pushes it to the fielder. One for twenty six. Very good blocking skills that we're seeing there on the uh, seeing there from the batswoman. It's um like I said, it's as I said earlier, you know, both teams are equally matched in terms of their qualities. And she goes down the wicket again. Oh! oh! What a one-handed <laughs> screamer by Lauren Cheadle. Oh, what about that one? That's an absolute ripper. Classic catches here on Triple H. Unfortunately. On Macquarie Sports or MacArthur Sports. <laughs> on Frog Box. Let's fire it up on Hawkesbury as a, uh, yeah, there we go. Unfortunately I'll take not, a breath. Unfortunately not picked up on the Frog Box. The heat's getting to me. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately not picked up on the vision, but oh. Lauren Cheadle there at short mid-wicket. <laughs> Just, it's almost like the Jack Edward catch from the yeah. from the game against at, the heat against the heat at, at um, a week ago Carrara at on the Gold Coast just sticks the one hand out almost in hope and prayer more than anything and just sticks and you saw a reaction afterwards not being able to believe that it's stuck in the hand but sometimes those little moments are the big things here in these grand finals and. I tell you, the Ghost will be happy to see the other side of Sammy Joe. She was just starting to really find a groove out for 17, off 13 deliveries. But, boy, as I said, that's just one of those sort of cricketer catches. Just no reaction time. Yeah. Stick the hand out and it sticks. And, uh, boy, two for 26 here. I think the Ghost will be very happy how they're placed so far. One of the moments of the final, without a doubt, that was sensational. Two for 26 in the fourth over. Kira Churchland, the captain, comes to the wicket now. And they needed that wicket. Sammy Jo Johnson already had a four and a six. She was winding it up in the final. Here goes a bark hat again. Good length and just holds up on the batter who pushes it straight back to the bowler for no run. Nice, nice block there for mm. Callum. Yeah, yep. well, I was going to say that, that that probably not going for the run was probably a smart move. Uh, you sure you're okay, mate? You know, the heat hasn't got to your head yet. You're drinking your water. I'm drinking my water. And this one has played late to point. Four overs gone. This is an entertaining final. Sydney Tigers, two for 26. I'll be rehydrating in around about 1 minute 30. <laughs> yeah. Or we'll six have, deliveries time. We'll have Nick Kutnyak and Justin Panina joining you back in commentary for the next five overs after this one. We hope you are enjoying listening wherever you are listening through, whether it's Frogbox through the Cricket New South Wales YouTube channel, whether it is Triple H 100.1 FM, Hawkesbury, MacArthur Sports Radio. I'm sure you're enjoying how the Ghosts uh, started this final. Um, I said it's great that we have so many outlets um, covering this grand final day. As, as you said, that we see that uptick in, uh, in um, just women's sport participation. As I said, it's been a long time. It was just Triple H that was calling it. Now to see where all the, the, the calls are going now, it is really good to see. Because as I said, it is a great competition. Kingsgrove Sports, we can't forget about them as well. Uh, yep. Their first year sponsoring the competition too. Sarah Coit into the attack. Bit of a misfield as she tickles around the corner on the 45 degree angle. They will pick up a single. Two for 27. Handy replacement when uh, you need to give uh, Lauren Cheadle a break. Lots of experience here. Um, been a sort of she's been around the traps. I uh, think that Tasmania and South Australia at one point, but back home in New South Wales. Oh, oh, oh what a catch! It's another beauty. An absolute screamer takes it just above the ground, and the covers there. This fielding unit, Campbelltown Camden, mm. they are very slack. No wonder they're in the final. And all of a sudden now, the captain's gone Churchland for a duck. It's three for 27. Well, I said it maybe just held up in a little bit in the pitch there for Churchland. It just looked like she got through a shot a bit quicker than the b she was expecting to before the ball arrived and was just uppish enough for it to get to that fielder at short cover. 
That's what they would have wanted with Sarah Coit coming into the attack. Try and back up those first good four overs, and she's certainly done the job there. And, uh, yeah, this middle order now for Sydney, they're going to really have to step up here and uh, try and get themselves to a competitive total. All it takes is just one misstep, and then that's it. One, Just that one little misjudgment, and then that's it. It's... Uh, the fielders will just have a field day and uh yeah see what i did there um and they'll just um they'll just go for it and that's how i guess that's how you get out yeah they're trying and two great catches here to get rid of sammy joe johnson and kira churchland to the wicket now is olivia maxwell so campbelltown camden on top in this final the run rate's not too bad but they're getting these early wickets and here goes Coit steaming in. Oh, a nice little movement away there off the seam. Right arm medium fast. A lot of energy out there with this fielding team. You can see they're very keen to win this title. Yeah, well, I so said you got Eva Rag out there. She was the, the mainstay of the previous innings with 37. Coit again. Maxwell pops it into the onside. But they do the covering up inside that circle. No run. Also got Pl uh, Gazelle Plummer as well. She's 42 off 24, I believe, in that in that previous game as well. So, I said, they've still got some firepower in the shed there, but can't let Coit and, and Cheadle run right here early doors. Oh, and in the block hole. Couldn't do much with that. Pushes into the offside for no run. Coit absolutely flying through this over. She's one for one of five deliveries. And uh, almost bowls at speed of an over like a spinner, really. She doesn't muck around with these medium paces and beaten outside the off stump. That's another beauty. Coit puts the hands up in the air on her head. Five overs gone here. The Tigers three for 27 to take over the commentary now. Nick Kudnak. Well, thank you, Kiwi Mick. Hey, JP, you just want to talk, don't you? It's 27 for three after five. Oh, yes. Marvellous effort, that. Well, no, somehow from 40 degrees to somehow we're under 30. Oh, yeah. It's been you love weather, don't you? Oh, I get real excited. You, are you a guy that checks the weather every day? Well, Nick, for what I do as a job, yes. Oh, yeah, you're posty. Of course you do. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> the cat will return to the bowler's end. And she'll be into Eva Rag on this broadcast side as she comes in. Rag plays it to the onside for no run. Run rate just over five at the moment, Nick. Not too bad. They'll, they'll probably want to target again the 140, 150 mark here, the Sydney Tigers. Mm, as now Bacat comes in again. Spin. On the back foot, Rag. Twisted it to the onside for no run. Good conditions at the moment. I've got to say, it's, you, it's a nice if, afternoon. If you asked us three hours ago, I, I probably would have been a pig on a spit. <laughs> I tell you now, I would have minded that pig on a spit too. Uh, as long as you don't have the apple in the mouth. Uh, but Cat comes in and played to the onside by Rag again. No run. Rushing for her overs at the moment here. Nick, um, 2.3 overs. One for 17. This has been a good start. 5.3 into this contest. Trying to sweep rag. There's no mm. touch and there's a wide call, but the keeper is still, you know, she's still appealing. Very excited appealing. That's showing her ex excitement. And Are you about the yawn on us? Nearly close to. <laughs> I'm just chillaxing. You are. You've got the sunnies on at the moment, thinking you're Mark Taylor. As uh, <laughs> Rag on the back foot cuts it. Filter it's oh, a no. cover. Well, she was able to stop it initially, but then it went through her hands. And then she got back to it. Only went about three metres. And they didn't even run anyway. Score remains three for 28. That's another thing, too. If you are the batting side at the moment, would you attack and not, just go for the run? Not yet. The cat comes in. Down the wicket. Rag goes. Filter to Long Long gets to it. Will only be a single. Thrown back in. And the score now moves to 3 for 29. You feel like that Rag and Maxwell got to like hold on to the partnership. 
So nine for 297, the Windies, by the way, just losing a wicket. And India 175 for three. And could be a boil over here at Centre Court here at Melbourne Park. Yeah, it was a Joseph out is on the back foot. Maxwell goes, but the fielder at cover gets to it. It is no run. Oh, he wants to join us. Mirzi, what's happening? I was just going to say, yeah, the wicket at the Gabba. Uh, Kemar Roach uh, run out by Labuschagne oh. after oh. falling over in the middle of the pitch. It was Kemar <laughs> Roach. You're right. He was out for eight. So Marnus Labuschagne, he loves a run out, doesn't he? He loves anything. Uh, by the way, three for 29 after six. We're a big fan of uh, Marnus, aren't we? Big fan. Just, just. I love how everything, everything is. He appeals our room. for everything. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> He's the only person I know that appeals for everything. Actually, no club cricket. You see plenty of those. See plenty of those in club cricket, don't you? That's true too. They just, they all think they may have DRS. Oh, club cricket. Don't start that. Anyway, it's Coit to continue. She comes in, played down the onside. This will be only a single, but good effort. Expecting this from Eva Rag. She's uh, starting to dominate a little bit. Single for her. She moves her score to four. It's three for 30. She's four off 10, but I reckon she's getting herself in. I reckon she's going to get herself cool, calm, and collected in. That's Maxwell. I'm going to play that to the fielder at cover. They go for the quick single, and that is very good running between wickets. She moves her score to one. It's 31 for the loss of three. It was a quick yes, and it was a quick run. Mm. They had run there from the, from the non-striker to easily get that single there. You have to do that, don't mm. you? You have to do that. As Coit again, top of her run-up. Makes her way in. Oh, it's just outside. There was an oh, inch oh, oh, oh. away, I reckon, from the bat of Rag. It was close. It made you flinch, JP. Oh, that's a page of a delivery. It was close. It was an absolute page. It was absolutely close, but not to be. Coit. Familiar bowling style comes in the rag. She flicks it off the pads. It's down the leg side. They're going for two. Fielder there at deep square. Throws it back in. But the two is suffice. Rag moves her score to six. And it's three for 33. As we see this subtly now, just howling towards Cricket Central. It's a lovely venue. As I said, first time we've been out here, JP. It's it's a great ground. They've done a great job. I wouldn't mind going to a couple of Sheffield Shield games here as Coit comes in. It's punched through the offside by Rag, but no run, but the throw could have been overthrows. Field recover, throw it back in, but maybe a little bit too much on that. It's still stopped off. The score remains three for 33. It's Rag on six. Maxwell on one. One ball left of the Coit over. She comes in, a pill for LBW. Well, it's, I reckon it's hit glove. Yep. And uh, that's what the umpire says. Rag still remains on six. Maxwell on one. At the end of the seventh over, it's three for 33. Coit, one over. Uh, should be two overs. And she is one for one. We'll get that confirmed, JP. It's always fun when the scores change on me. Now she's one for five, just looking at the... Uh, score there on the play cricket or the YouTube page to be exact and uh, was it a, the cat is one for 19 off three she's going to continue here JP finishing out her four overs bowled really well getting the bats bats the batters to play mm. each ball on its merits all so the threes Maxwell faces this she just plays it back with her MB bat. See the stickers from here. The orange and black. Spicat. Makes her way in. And Maxwell, on the back foot, tries to cut that. Clem stopped off at cover. Cat. Top of her run up. Trying to cut again was Maxwell. Very awkward the way she. It's, it's one of those mix between a cut, but she is sort of looking to sweep down the onside, but playing it to the offside. She was trying to probably wait a little bit later, try mm. and cut it. 
Just unfortunately, the ball just crept on her pretty quickly, and she just had to put that on ball there. Bacat in, and swing and a miss by Maxwell. Very close. She had to play at that. That was nearly, that was on that fourth and fifth stump line there, and gee whiz, nearly counted onto the stumps, but Bacat again, just getting through her overs really quickly. She needs a wicket here, though. Maxwell awaits for Bacat. Maxwell again tries to flick that through the offside. Will be a single. And not going to go for two. Just the single is suffice for them. Maxwell moves her score to two. Rag is on six. It's three for 34. One ball left of the Bacat over and also her spell. No adjustments to the field thus far at the moment. Yep. Point, a cover. Deep cover as she goes down the ground rag, but it's stopped off by Bacat. Her four overs are done. One for 20. Rag is on six. Maxwell on two. It's three for 34. Just a very disciplined bowling over there for Bacat. Just, it was a good midway through her, that over there, making the bats, batters play, but it's just at the moment three for 34. The run rate of four and a quarter. It's steady at the moment, but again, you want that 130, 140 just to give themselves a fighting chance here. You know, JP, when you are saying steady, I was thinking about something else. We can't use that line here, but yes. steady, hot and strong. <laughs> anyway, JP, we're about to see a change in bowling. It's going to be Baldwin. Kesha Baldwin to be bowling from the buses and I'll get you, Butler. <laughs> on the buses. the buses I'll get you butler surprised Andrew Wassell hasn't just uh, whispered in our ears going how do you know that <laughs> I'll get you butler <laughs> as uh, Maxwell plays this past the field recover this is racing to the fence yeah four runs that's a good stroke isn't it picked it up early now Nick N knew where she wanted to Play the ball across the carpet, four runs, and just a little loosener first up there from Baldwin. Let's see if she can tighten up her line in the next few. She'll need to. Maxwell waits, and oh. she decides to pull this. It's going to go to the field of deep mid. Throw comes in. Oh, oh this is going to be a run out. Well, I she wanted to go, Rag. There was a run there. Maxwell stayed her ground, said, no, don't. And Rag just looks at her going, you just left me hung out the dry. That was just a joke. Let's that, be honest. That was two there. There was two. No need for the hesitation. And well done to the fielder down there. Just, just assess the options. Throw it to the wicket keeper. Keep it just an easing of knocking off the bowels there. And it's four for 38 here for the Sydney Siders. I don't think it's harsh, is it? No, it's just two there. I thought there was two. Mm, I, I'm surprised they didn't go the two. Surprised. Well, they ran that first one really hard, and I thought, that's two in that easily. Mm. As I was watching the throw, and then all of a sudden, I just saw... The hesitation? The stop, and you're thinking, what are you doing? You don't want to see run outs like that. No, no, that's a calamity. Yeah. And that was one where Maxwell literally stayed her ground and said, no, no. And you're like... But there is a run there, isn't there? I generally, thought, we were, I generally thought that there was two, isn't that? Rag out for six. Should be seven when that gets amended. The score was... No, it is six. No, it is three for 38. Just wanted to make that... Correct on my uh, screen. There's now Baldwin to make her way in. Played down the onside, Plummer. She'll get a single for that. It was a nice little flick down the corner. Fielder at fine gets to it. JP, if you're Sydney at the moment, and you're going, geez, this is not what we wanted? I would say yes at three for 38. There's Baldwin Bowles. And it's played to the offside on the back foot by Maxwell. Fielder at cover comes across the deep cover fielder. And the throw in and uh, stopped. You want to be at least 50 or 60 
just over the 10, just on the 10 over mark and try to ex start sort of accelerating your run rate. Run rate at 4.8. Still, It looks like it's still a 130, 140 pitch. Plumber one, Maxwell on strike on seven, four for 40 on the back foot. Plumber on strike to be exact, Nick, and she dots that. So Maxwell on eight, Plumber on one to confirm that scoreboard. Always get tricked from time and time. Time to time, I should say. Time after time. No. No Cindy Lauper here, please. Plumber. Awaits Baldwin and blocks again. No run. At the end of the ninth, it's four for 41. We're getting a little bit tired, aren't we, JB? I need, it. I need my third coffee for the day. How many coffees have you had today? Two. At the venue, one? One, yes. Okay, good. I might get a hot chocolate. <laughs> Actually, here's a question for you. Hot chocolates. When you do them at home. Yes. Are you chocolate packet or are you get actual chocolate? No, uh, packet. No, I'm actual chocolate. Oh, boy. Yeah, so, so, you, you... so say, for instance, if it's the chomp. <laughs> the chomp in. It's great. It's crunchy. It's awesome. Picnics are great. Picnic hot chocolate. So you put like hot, like, so you put like a bar of chocolate in. No, you, you say you actually get it mixed, mixed yeah yeah it's great Augustine now to come in start her bowling and it's played to the onside by Maxwell for no run yeah, it, it, it's nice it's really nice you know Kit Kat dairy milk's pretty good caramel too yeah it's a caramel it's played to the offside by Maxwell it's on the back foot single Score now moves to four for 42. Maxwell on nine, Plummer on one. Augustine. To come in from this broadcast end of Cricket Central. She makes her way in. Plummer cuts. Field recover gets to it, no run. It was a really slow delivery. Very slow. It was like the batsman was waiting and waiting, just had no patience. If they went just a tad longer, it would have been smashed. Here's another delivery here from Augustine. And it's been, well, is it a drop? Really, JP? No, just, just um, it was a down. bump ball. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Because uh, Augustine tried to get a hand to it, but it was a bump ball. As Augustine makes her way in. It's been oh. swept by Plummer. Filled it there. Take oh. off. She's dropped it. She's dropped it in the key moment. Sarah Coy at the deep. At deep mid. And she's even got her hands in her head going, that is going to cost us maybe. Oh, boy. Plummer went for the heave hove and was nearly caught on the boundary. As Maxwell faces this Augustine delivery on the back foot, she rocks and the field recover gets to it. No run. So, yes, 10 overs in. And JP, it's 4 for 43. Maxwell on 8. Plummer on 1. This is a great battle in the making. And Kiwi Mick, Rainish and JP will take us through the next five overs. Yep. Kiwi Mick, this is going to be fascinating. Yeah, it is. What a, a good tussle this is. Campbelltown, Camden, their bowling and fielding generally has been really good except that drop catch. But round the grounds, uh, West Indies all out for 311. West Indies all out for 311. And uh, Race Augustine to bowl now. Tries to just chip it into the onside, but no run there. That was Gazelle Plummer on strike. Matter of fact, it's Keisha Baldwin bowling here. So they're really making them earn their runs. Worthy of a final. Here goes Baldwin now. Slashes this one through the covers. A fielder out on the fence will do the duties out there. Four for 44. Wonder what sort of a score they're going to look for here. I, I would like, you would think they would need at least 70 or 80 in this 10 over period just to give themselves a fighting chance at least to crack over that 120, 130. Yeah, you want at least 130, I'd think. Mm -hmm. Plummer and Max have got to stay for the majority of it. 
Oh, oh, and this is beaten outside the off stump. Olivia Maxwell on strike. She's on 9 off 18. Gazelle Plummer 3 off 8. And that was a beautiful delivery there. This medium pace bowling by Keisha Baldwin. Who's it going to be? Who's going to take out this final? She runs it and bowls now. Oh, this is a great shot around the corner, but there is a fielder down on the fence. Just backward of square there. Interesting fielding position, sort of in between square leg and fine leg on the angle. Very, um, very wide ground here at Cricket Central. Tell you what, if you played it with the full boundaries, they'd be huge. So it's, it's a big setup here. This one just pushed into the offside for no run. It's a Gazelle Plummer back on strike. You mentioned it, I reckon from that rope to that fence, that's like at least 15, 20 metres. Yeah, and, oh. the, and the rest. The rest, yeah. Yeah, it'll be a lot. Yep. Probably 30 or 40 metres. That's a, this is just a, a ridiculous big crown. It's a huge ground. Oh. And that's a big edge. It's going to roll towards the boundary, but there is a fielder down here at third man in front of our commentary box area that was Elizabeth Barcat doing the... Tidying up duties, 11 overs gone here, and it's 4 for 46. The Sydney Tigers batting first in this final. And some of their key batters back in the heart. Giselle Plummer played really well in that semi-final one. Played a, a, a sort of a 40-odd score. Let's see who's coming into the bowling now. Now, uh, Grace Augustine is going to bowl some spin from the commentary end of the ground here at the great facilities at Cricket Central. Really tosses it up there. Beautiful drive along the carpet. Very good surface here at Cricket Central. As a plane flies overhead, and uh, the sun has broken through here. It's pretty much mainly blue skies now. Still, that breeze has continued through the day. Again, tossed it right up there in a very similar shot, just driven on the onside for another single. Four for 48 here in the 12th over. And here goes Plummer back on strike. She turned that into a full toss by charging at the batter, at the bowler. And again, another single down on the fence there was Lauren Cheetle. Four for 49. Augustine given a lot of fly. And that, just that passage of play, the fielder was a little bit bamboozled with the ball was about to approach her. It sort of did like a wicked turn and she completely misfilled that. Yeah, she doesn't. Oh, this one's a bit shorter though. Swivels it around the corner. And that's going to bring up the 50 here for the Sydney Tigers in this final. They're four for 50 here in the 12th over. Just looks like they're just going to steady things up before a late charge where they'll open up the arms with the batting. Here goes Augustine. Beautiful shot here, but again, this is sharp fielding at point. Cutting off the runs, taking their catches. They've taken a couple of blinders out there. And that first five overs of play, two really good catches to get rid of Sammy Joe Johnson and Churchland, the captain. Last ball of the 12th now. Maxwell on strike, but shorter again. Oh, and this is a great shot through that point area. This one should roll all the way for four. Yes, it does. Beautiful shot there, just waited on it. Augustine flighting it up, but playing a beautiful late little cut shot. And with 12 overs gone here, Sydney Tigers four for 55. Now, if I was looking at Campbelltown, Camden, they'll probably want to tell them themselves, let's, let's keep the Sydney Tigers to under 100. At the moment, they're doing all right here at 4 for 55 with 8 overs left to go. And again, we said this in the previous game in the nor Northern Districts, when you bowl 27 extras, that's not good. This is great bowling here from by the Ghost. Four yep. extras in this innings. I doesn't get any better than that. This is just superb bowling by Campbelltown Camden. And Kesha Bold Baldwin is bowling from... Yep, right arm medium pace. 
They're going to take on the fielder for the single. They get home comfortably. Good running there by Plummer and Maxwell. So Maxwell is 16 off 22 with a couple of boundaries. Plummer 8 off 14. Keisha Baldwin 2.1 overs, no wicket for 11. With these medium paces. She runs it again and bowls now. This is a short one. Gives it the treatment. But there is a fielder out there. In that deep mid wicket. Or deep cover area. The sweeper on the fence. Does the tidying up. 4 for 57. So again they just trying to rotate the strike and get the boundaries when they can. This is a great pull shot, but straight to the field at deep square leg. Again, they run through for the one. High standard of play by both teams, especially Campbelltown Camden. Their bowling's been very tight. And of course, their fielding, for the most part, has been outstanding. A couple of great catches to get rid of a couple of players. Here goes Maxwell on strike. Up in the block hole, but flicks it off the pads. And they'll pick up another single. Four for 59. Look, now you can see Plummer and Maxwell just looking now to accelerate the run rate now. The run rate at the moment is at 4.7. It's just halfway through the... Or just with two more deliveries left to go in this 13th over. They're trying to tell themselves, give them, I think 130, 140, give themselves a chance. This one just ducks in late. Maybe a chance of a run out here. In fact, she's gone. So that was a bit of a risky single. Probably not necessary. And all of a sudden now, Giselle Plummer is run out at the oh. striker's end. Single, sorry, Kevin. That single really wasn't, wasn't on. Wasn't on, was it? It just, it should have been a loud, and I mean a loud, no. Stay back in your crease. But that's one of those, you talk about unforced errors in tennis, this this doesn't. This was just simply an unforced error there. I would say from the striker because they should have yelled no, no, again, no, no, no. Now it's four for fifty-nine. Sorry, five for fifty-nine. Sorry. Yeah. And um, they could not make the Tigers could be in jeopardy of not not even making a hundred at the moment. Yeah, that's right. So. Campbelltown Camden, of course, they were fourth on the ladder going into this. They knocked over first place at the 9 a.m. game. St. George Sutherland getting only 118. And they rattled that off, that chase. One for 119 with Anika Leroy 90 of 66. So jeez. Look out for her coming up a little bit later when they bat. 90 of 60-ish. Yep, 90 of 66. Oh jeez. They were seen in her like beach balls. <laughs> And Samira Demiglio comes to the wicket now. She'll actually be at the non-strikers end. The run out happening at the non-strikers. Olivia Maxwell, 18 off 24. But she might have to try and bat through here. They've got to get at least 100. They did bowl Northern Districts out for only 74 though. So you never know in this game with runs on the board. Taps it down the ground for no run. So that's 13 overs gone here. The Sydney Tigers in the final. Five for 59. Just all at sea in the previous over. Now again, can can the, can the Sydney Tigers just reassess now? And like, probably got to tell themselves 120, 130 at the moment just to give themselves a chance here. But, geez, it's... I still think they'll be lucky to make 100 here, the Tigers at the yeah. moment. It's just unforced errors... And a couple we'll, of great, great catches, catches have yeah, made the difference. difference. Yes, yeah, so, oh, I will agree with that one. Especially that one-hander to get rid of Sammy Joe Johnson. Mm. That was... And that low catch mm. to get rid of mm. Churchland. That really... That really uh, set the tone here. As they always say, Kiwi, Fielding's an attitude thing and, and uh, yep. definitely switched on here, the Campbelltown Camden ghost. So Grace Augustine, two overs, no wicket for 11, comes in with these right-arm spinners... This one just hit into the offside little deft touch there for another single. Five for 60. She loves throwing it right up there. Doesn't mind giving it a bit of flight, Augustine. Maxwell on strike. 
18 off 25. Full toss, goes for it. Will it beat the fielder on the boundary? No, some great work, a diving effort to cut off the boundary. And a very good arm to throw it into the keeper. They get a couple though, five for 62. I've been impressed with the fielding in the outfield throwing it into the keeper everything's been pretty much bang on it's uh, we're good re outfielding reiterating Nick here we make it's, a, it's an attitude thing with fielding yeah it's an attitude thing and this one chipped uppishly they'll pick up a very easy single there doing the fielding on the fence uh, for Campbelltown Camden as they pick up another one five for 63 And <laughs> there's a few interesting smells coming through the commentary box. Tell you what, I'm looking forward to my water and 10 deliveries. I'm trapped. <laughs> that you eat six. <laughs> I can't move. I've got to keep going here. As on strike now is going to be Demeglio. Come on, let's get through the overs. No joke. <laughs> so it's going to be Augustine. Full toss. Smashes it. Fielder on the fence. They'll get a single. Oh. And it's uh, again just rotating the singles in this over. Five for 65, one ball left in the 14th. Demiglio, a left handed batter. Oh, this is a nice little shot around the corner. And there's no fielders to be seen as they converge on the ball. Now they will pick up a couple of runs. So 14 overs gone here. Sydney Tigers 5 for 67. Again, just discipline bowling, not giving the Tigers any sort of inch shot to punish the ball all over the park. But now you probably will expect now six overs left. Yeah. Probably you, they've got to probably tell themselves start of the 15th over, got to accelerate the run rate, get probably from 15 to 20 at least a minimum of 8 to 10 runs and over yeah 120 they've got to get at least 120 I reckon it just to think and we've probably said this earlier the only thing you probably worry about from Sydney's batting perspective is I never thought I'd say this it's running between the wickets mm. that's a concerning part oh, oh and that's a cracking delivery by Baldwin beats the batter outside the off stump Maxwell's on 22 of 29 Keisha Baldwin, 3.1 overs, 1 for 19. And Steve Smith is gone in the test match. The opening experiment, LBW trapped by Kemar Roach. And this one's hit through the covers. As we uh, do a bit of a round the grounds. Out at uh, India there, 196 for 3. And what uh, else is there? We've also got the, the Australian <laughs> Open in Melbourne. Uh, Novak Djokovic playing um, playing Italian underdog Sinner. Um, definitely, it, it was uh, just as it was hitting quarter to four. Uh, it looked like Djokovic was on his way out of the door with this one, but he seems to have started to make a comeback. Current score, 15-0. Uh, so it's going to be Demigli on strike. Four off three. Goes for it. Nice little shot, but they've got all these shots covered with fielders perfectly placed on the fence. So again, it's just the single. Five for 69. And the 15th over. Maxwell back on strike. She's 23 off 30 with two fours. Wonder what they, sort of a score they're going to go for here. And this one, oh, that's a great shot. That'll definitely be four. Maxwell's got the eye in. She got the short delivery, and she just punches it through that mid-wicket area. Good shot. Five for 73. You can hear that through that sound effects, Mike. It sounded crisp and tonked away for four. Kept it along the carpet. And two more balls left in this over. Run rate crept over five. Yep. Yeah, they'll definitely, they'll be pushing it in the last five overs. I think they'll be trying to speed this up. Maxwell, 27 off 31. 
Oh, that's oh. a great Yorker. Dipped on the batter late. They nearly went for it, but then they decided, yeah, nah, we're not going to do that because the other alternative is uh, losing another batsman. That's right. So last ball of the 15th now. Baldwin, 3.4, sorry, 3.5 overs, no wicket for 20. Pretty tidy figures there. As she runs in for the last ball of her spell, full toss, driven straight back to the bowler who deflects it and they get a single. So after 15 overs here, Sydney Tigers, five for 74. To take you through the next five overs of commentary will be Matt Mears, joined by Nick Kutnick. And Callum's still with us. So look, this is an interesting situation. There is five overs to go at five for 74. I just wonder, Cal, if they're going to be able to get to maybe a 120 mark because that's what we were talking about before, but they've been struggling a bit, haven't they? Yeah, they oh. <laughs> well, I'm actually oh. talking to you, I Cal. I thought no. you were talking to the No, I was actually talking to you. I wanted, oh, I'm sorry. I wanted serious oh, insights. <laughs> Who invited First you? First ball, play to the offside. That's a good shot. I'll tell you now, Maxwell's able to get that. Towards the boundary, but it's going to stop short by about five metres. They're going to run three. Well, there you go. When Maxwell wants to run, she's going to run. Yes. She gets three runs for a total. Yeah, and we were sa you were saying that they were going to try and get 120. I mean, I'm going to make a different prediction here. Mm. I think they'll probably try and get for the 110. Try mm. and get to 110. I think that'll be a respectable thing to go. Maybe 115 at a push. And then it's all in the hands of our friends from Campbelltown who will be trying to, of course, secure that final before, uh, what did we say, six o'clock was it or half past six? Well, it depends on what the time will end up being. Demiglio was able to late cut that two runs for her. She moves her score to seven. It's five for 79. Augustine bowling at the moment. Two deliveries so far. So far, Mizia this over. They haven't been flash, have they? Not quite, but uh, it's, a, it's a little bit of a upward momentum the Tigers need. And that's got to be a no ball, surely, by Augustine. It was over the um, the waist. It was played down by Demiglio. The umpire waiting for the call, and they're going to say no. So, fine ball. And yeah, let's uh, get, take a couple of steps down the wicket, which well, probably that's helped the, the case. You're probably right about that. So, let's see what they can do here. Campbelltown, they can get a wicket. Five for 80. Maxwell on 31 on strike. Demiglio on eight. Maxwell goes forward to it, plays it through the covers. There's at least two there. It's racing towards the rope, and it's going to be stopped off. Now, it's a good effort to stop that, and they only run two. So Maxwell moves her score to 33. Demiglio on eight. It's five for 82. If it's, uh, I'm maybe this, maybe you gentlemen can correct me here, but it does look like that Sydney are playing quite conservatively. They're not really going for a burst of trying to push it up into those triple digits, which of course was the downfall of Northern District, was they couldn't quite meet that high, that high score. On the back foot uh, was Maxwell. Will be a single for her. She moves her score to 33. The score is five for 82. I said I don't think it, the five wickets down, Callum, probably doesn't hurt help them. We said that you got the bowlers to come after this. I said these two need to probably face the majority of the balls that are left in this innings if they do want to post something competitive. Augustine comes in. It's smashed by Demiglio. She's been caught. Well, the fielder there at mid-wicket was able to take the catch. It was comfortable, really, and they're six down for 82. And Sydney in a bit of trouble, I've got to say. But Campbelltown, Cam, this is what they wanted to do. Yeah, well, you can see with Domingo, try to go back over the bowler's head. Maybe just got it off the inside edge of the bat and, and lands in the hands of the fielder there at short mid-wicket. Had to hit the go button at some point because he said, you're not going to get... A competitive total just knocking it around maybe getting it to 90 or 95 but um I said the lower order now area of the sydney tigers they didn't they need to really make sure they probably get maxwell on strike for as many balls as possible to make sure they can maximize these last couple of overs but we saw in that first game the ghosts they're only chasing about 115 they did it with ease so that's probably going to be their target they need to know that They've, uh, they, they're coming up against a, a particularly red-hot Annika Leroy making 90 not out in that first game. Mm -hmm. So 
you said they, they've just got to post something but you never know with grand finals something always can happen a little bit maybe if Leroy goes early it could be uh, the Tigers day I'm not sure but that's why we love grand finals anything can happen so Demiglio were out for eight off seven rocks it was Rollings who took the catch from the Augustine delivery six for 82 and it'll be Maxwell and strike Power the new batter on the non-strikers end. And Sarah Coit to bowl her tail end of her spell. Two over so far, one for five. I like her bowling style. I've always said it's, it's unique in some regard because it's very quick as she comes in now. And it's played down the onside by Maxwell for a single. They're looking for two here. Maxwell won't run on this occasion. Good communication this time between Maxwell and Powell. And the score now... Is 83 for six, Maxwell on 34. Breeze is uh, starting to pick up again if uh, you heard that through the effects, Mike. But mm -hmm. um, so hopefully conditions won't be too challenging down there on the pitch. Yeah, also, always like Coy, always tries to bowl her overs as quickly as possible as well. Doesn't let the batter um, get time to focus. And on the back foot, power goes. So the fielder at uh, cover. Couldn't stop it. It bounced off her hands. Filter at uh, mid-off gets to it. So it'll be a single. And uh, Powell moves her score to one. And it's six for 84. And another wicket in the cricket. It's Marcus Lubbershane out for three. Australia two for 12. Trailing by 299. As Coit makes her way in going down the wicket. Maxwell plays it through the onside. Filter at mid-wicket. Deep mid-wicket gets to it. Only be a single. Maxwell moves her score to 34, power on one, it's 6 for 85. It'll be interesting to see now Cameron Green making his way to the wicket. Um, this is this is where he, if the number four experiment needs to come up. They need him to make some runs. It'll be interesting to see what he produces. A couple slips in place there in that test match. is back here, it's Powell who just chips it onto the fielder at mid-on and takes the catch easily. Coit has another wicket, it's two for her today. Powell's out for one, and it's six for eight, or make it seven for 85. Yeah, it just tries to go down the ground again. Probably doesn't come quite off the middle of the bat, and yeah, the fielder there at mid-on just stood there with open arms and didn't really even have to move a muscle and uh, was straight down her throat. And uh, again, as the Tigers, they have to push the go button. They have to try and get a competitive total, but... As said, just the wicket starting to tumble. Maybe just need to change tack, try and get Maxwell to face as many of the remaining three or so overs to uh, try and maximise their total. But it'll be said it'd be interesting to see what the two batters are having to chat about now. Probably something similar. Brings Alexandra Timms to the crease and. Uh Disappointing, isn't it? Because we expected a little bit more from Sydney, didn't we, Calm? Yeah, I, d I mean, certainly my prediction now of them getting to 100 is starting to look slimmer and slimmer into the into the distance and everything. <laughs> um, but certainly, I, I, I still stand by what I said, though, in the sense that they are trying to play very conservatively. Um, just before they do take another bowl, uh, it's worth mentioning the Australian Open happening in Melbourne. Djokovic up against Sinner. Uh, I think we're on set number three, and it's 15-all. Uh, yes, 5-all there in the third set, but 15-all in the 11th game of the third set. She's going to do your math sometimes with tennis as uh, Tim plays it to the onside for no run. Coit bowling well. Two for seven today. One ball left of this over. She comes in, shorter ball, and Tim's able to bat that down for a single point, throws it in, but she's safe there, Maxwell. And the score now moves to 7 for 86. Tim's on 1, Maxwell on 34. Yeah, they're, um, it's, it's definitely cutting it kind of close here for Sydney. If they need to get, they need to really think of pulling something out of the bag now if they want to have a slim chance of staying in this. I think... Um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to make a prediction and call it because chances are it's probably going to end badly and it's going to backfire in my face. But um, Sydney definitely needs to do something if they want to stay in this, even if it's just by clinging on by the, by the tips of their fingernails. So it's not going to get any easier with Lauren Cheadle to come back to bowl her two remaining overs here from the uh, northern, the commentary end here of Cricket Central. Uh, as I said, they're going to have to use their wits about them here now, the Sydney Tigers. They'll be... Some gaps out there. We've seen how fast this outfield's been. So if you can get the ball past the fielders, 
you can pick up a couple of runs, but as I said, as someone that was bowling in a test match only a month or so ago, certainly is uh, going to dial up the intensity here just a little bit for the batters. Stacked heavily on the offside. You've got a fielder there at deep third now. Uh, instead of being on the circle, be a third. And then you've got a filter at point, cover, extra cover, mid off, then it's long on with mid wicket, deep mid wicket, and a fine as well. Cheadle, come in to Tim's. Tim's on the back foot, dabs it down. They're going to go for the single. Well, I'll tell you one thing Tim's will make her ground, that but was she was stop start at the beginning, and that was what was going to hurt her. That was cussing it close. That was very much cussing it close there. Surprised by that music because she stopped started. There was clearly a run there, but she's got to be careful, doesn't she, Tims? Yeah, you well, know, they probably thought that they'd be going to the keeper's end, but yeah, I think you just, you're at that point, you just need to run everything, unless it's a block back down the wicket. Cheadle, left arm around the wicket. Maxwell decides to did try it? to hit this, and Ali moved about three feet. Did it, hit the, um, did it hit the wicket? It looked like that from where I'm sitting, but. Maybe it was um, maybe it was an obscurity or something by the light. Yeah, well, it just bounced off the bat and then she... Well, it didn't move. It just didn't move, uh, pretty much. Expecting a big hit, but there was a ding, but there was not much with it. Actually, really, it was all ding, because you can hear that from here. Anyway, <laughs> Cheadle, to come in around the wicket. You got me in stereo for some reason, which is always good. <laughs> Actually, it's no good having me on stereo. Ask a couple of people like an eagle anyway. <laughs> Cheadle comes in around the wicket, oh. and it's smashed by Maxwell. But guess what? It's only a single. Fielder there at mid-off gets to it. So Maxwell moves her score to 35. Tim's on two at seven for 88. It is a little bit more serious when I'm not with JP in commentary, which just shows that JP just drags me down. He drags me down, Mizzy. It, it might be to some people's taste, might not be to others. But uh, as I said, it's been great having you two in the uh, com box with us this afternoon. <laughs> okay, Cheadle comes in around the wicket. Well, I tell you what, now, what Tim's that? decided to step away from the uh, the wicket, and then she chips it. The field at third will get to it. They'll run. Well, they're going to run. Oh, so oh I'll tell you what, this oh, could be close. Four. close. Four. Maxwell got no, me. They're, they're going to run still four. Going. They're going to run four. So there you go. They ran three, <laughs> and that was just Harry Carey three, and then the overthrows meant four. Well, that's scary in itself how that ended up. It's seven for 92. So suddenly my prediction is now looking a lot more alive again. But interesting shot, though. It was trying to get turned around the corner, but you'll take four however you can get him in a big game like this. She's on six, Tims. On the back foot. She's Here we go. able to flick that to the onside. Filter at, well, fine on the circle. Gets to it, so it'll only be a single. So, score now moves to 93 for seven. Tims on seven, and Olivia Maxwell on 35. Of course, Tims will have a four next to her name. Like they say, they don't write the result on the check. Technically, it didn't go to the boundary, but it was still four runs. So four will go to a name. Always love that. And this Cheadle goes in around the wicket to Maxwell, who just stabs it down to the onside. Fielder at deep will get to it. Throw will come in by Coit. This is going to hit. No, misses by an inch. The keeper will bounce off her. It's going to be no overthrows, though, this occasion. Maxwell makes her ground. She's on 37. Tim's on 7. It's 7 for 95. This is interesting all of a sudden, Mizzy. Yeah, well, I so said the throw there from Sarah Coyne just looks like she was torn between going for her on the full or, or doing the bounce throw and in, and in that case got in between. So hard for the keeper to try and pick that one up cleanly and uh, allowed the uh, Sydney batters to get back for that second. But maybe if just pulled back the throw a little bit they would have been able to affect that run out. But a little bit of spurt that the Tigers need. As I said, 7 for 95, two overs left to go. They can sort of pick off those 15 runs, get to 110. We saw how well they bowled towards uh, the Rangers. Can they do it again, the Tigers? Coit makes her way in, and Tim's again steps away as she plays a shot through, well, the onside behind square, effectively. And the fielder fine got to us. It's just an inside edge, really. But Tim, she does tend to step away, doesn't she, Measy? It just seems to be more comfortable getting towards the leg side. 
try and open up that offside, particularly as I said, probably a few more um, gaps on that side behind the fielders as well. Maxwell comes across for it, tried to pull it and missed. The keeper got to it easily, but oh, Maxwell, she fell over in the process as well. And trying to hoik these, uh, I think as long as you can get some runs, don't worry about trying to be the hero. Field set up. Fielder at third point. A deep team. cover, a cover, and a mid off. A shorter ball by Coit, and it's going to be called a wide. Overhead wide, and they're going to run an extra as well. So two wides will be called. Sarah Coit there with that shorter ball. No, he's been given out. What? Well, there's been a given run out run here. Out, given run out by the square leg. So oh, wow. she didn't even make her ground, and she was just dawdling, Tim's. Throw, throw came in, and she's out. No, 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 no. So what they've done is almost maybe a stumping. Oh, it's a stumping. Because they're, they're going to rule because the, the, the wicket was broken as the uh, striker was moving towards the non-striker's end. So Okay. So the old, the old Johnny Besto. Okay. <laughs> that's strange, isn't no, it? No, because that's when it, the wickets were hit uh, by yeah. the keeper. So, yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, I just want to say it again because I was trying to work out what exactly happened there because yeah, so it was it, all a bit of a mess. So when, it, when the ball came through... Obviously, looking for the they're looking at the wide and trying to play the pull shot was out out of a crease. Saw that the ball had gone through to the keeper. They thought, well, we'll run one through. But as the keeper's thrown at the stump, she's taken the bales off. The batter's out out of the ground, and that's eight wickets down now here for the Sydney Tigers. And it's Maxwell out. So wow, just that's it's a bit of a like because it all was a bit of a blur because we're just focusing on the wide. So we're more focused on the wide. So the score is now eight down for must be eight down for 97 we're just waiting for that to change through here but yeah that was not strange i think that caught everybody off guard going. yeah yeah I, I i was watching it and i was just thinking to myself you know th this is like that that was crazy it was like well hang on a second she swung the bat but the ball but it looked like the ball went but then they're suddenly saying no she's out you know, yeah, well, it, said, it, 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 did it take caught the, me off guard as it, well. It did take the, the square leg umpire a little while to give it. I think they were all a bit shocked. But uh, as I said, I think at the end of the day, right call. She was outside of crease when the when the ball mm. came back. Coit comes that, in. Did it's that blocked. hit the wicket? No. No. <laughs> Didn't hit the three poles. It looked like it, though. The centre pole from where I was sitting did kind of buckle inwards a little bit. But... Maybe that's just the wind. Coit to continue. And play to missed. Yeah, some great bowling here by Coit. Just showing her experience. Keeping the batters guessing as well. As well as trying to get through her overs as quickly as possible. There's some on the stump. Some are short. Some are outside. The, so they just keep them guessing. So it's a long hearse. Oh, yeah, no. unfortunately, though, not a good day to be a uh, Australian fan. Uh, another one bites the dust, as uh, Queen would say. As Coy comes in the bowl, and it's played to the offside by Longhurst. Fielder there, a deep cover gets to it, throws it in, will be a single. And she gets her first run, and the score now moves to 8 for 98. Yeah, um, Green now gone for 8, caught Braithwaite off the bowling of Kemar Roach. Coit comes in the bowl. It's flicked down the onside. Will be a single for Timms. And she just made a ground Longhurst. The throw hit. It would have been out at the end of the over. It will be 8 for 98. We're just waiting for the scores to flick on. She'll be 8 for 99 to be exact. Bit of a delay there from the scoreboard here at the venue. I think they're still, you, you can tell those watching on Frogbox, that is, yeah, they're still trying to catch up on the old, uh, <laughs> on the old, uh, on the old. Uh, they're dialing it up as we speak. <laughs> the <laughs> old Play <laughs> HQ. <laughs> I don't think Play HQ is <laughs> used to wides and wickets and whatever on the same ball, but uh, looks yeah. like we're caught up now. I think oh. we're all confused what happened there. I think everybody's yeah. trying to work out still. The old, the old internet. Uh, JP. Don't talk when you don't have a microphone on. Actually, don't, just don't talk full stop. Oh. Um, <laughs> in the meantime, we'll keep on being harsh to our commentary team. At least they turn up here as Cheadle comes in around the wicket. Tim steps back and then blocks it. Will be a single. They're going to run quickly. Longhurst just keeps on going all day. Score now moves to 100 for the loss of eight. 
Wong Hoos on one, and Tim was on ten. So now suddenly I'm happy because we're now into my little into my little zone of prediction. Um, but it does reinforce what I've been saying throughout this uh, is that Sydney are trying to play conservatively. They have had that. Um, they did have that run around with the Northern District. I think certainly fatigue setting in there. Campbelltown a bit more energetic because they've had that long rest. Cheadle comes in again. Longhurst swings the bat. Will be a single fielder. Point gets to it. Throw comes into the bowler's end. And Longhurst moves her score to two. Tim's on ten. It's eight for 101. And another wicket has fallen. Head is gone. Roach gets the wicket. He's three for. And we're watching the replay now of the Roach delivery. He had a tickle there, head. He was caught by the keeper. Go on, it's four for 24, we're falling over. And Australia is trading by 287 runs. So uh, like I said, it's not a good day if you're an Australian up at the Gabba in Brisbane or one of the millions of people watching across the country on television right now. Cheadle comes in to Tim. She's able to flick it onto the onside. Fielder there at a whitish fine gets to it. Throw comes back in. It'll be two runs to Tim's. She moves her score to 12. Longhurst on two. It's eight for 103. While we wait for the scoreboard to up there, there it is. <laughs> Don't worry, I do my math ahead of the scoreboard. I, I, you have to do that. You have to. You probably needs to have to be good at math, and I'm not. Uh, Cheadle comes in around the wicket. She has a swing at Tim's. She was able to bat it down to the onside. Feel it long gets to it. Throw comes in. Long on, of course. Long on, of course. And it will be a run there for Tim's. So here's the situation. It's 8 for 104. Tim's on 13. Longhurst on 2. There is two deliveries left. We get excited here because they could get to 110. Or they could be all out for 104. Possibilities. Cheadle comes in around the wicket. Longhurst plays and misses. Tims wants to run. Keeper has missed the stumps. The oh. ball has missed the stumps. You're kidding me. Oh, Tims makes her ground. Longhurst makes her ground. And that was a buy after all that. It's eight for 105 and my heart's pounding. <laughs> you're okay, yeah? You're, I you're think okay. I'm okay. Right, that's good. That's good. <laughs> what about Yeah, that's that? what I'm worried about. What about that? Like, just run. Anyway, Tim's has a chance to get some runs here. Last ball of the game. And, oh, she tried <laughs> to ramp it. It just hits a bat. It'll be a single. And uh, as uh, the throw was direct, it hit. As now they're going to run because it's over throws. Throw comes into the keeper's end. Oh. She makes the ground. I think Tims has just made her ground. She makes 15. Longhurst 2. 8 for 107. They're going to be chasing 108. The Ghosts. And Sydney, what about that? The last couple of balls. And that was crazy, Measy. Absolutely insane. Well, said they, they want to give us some entertainment through the Tigers. They knew that they were just a little bit behind what they were needed, and they just balls to the wall. What can you say? All, all, everything that you would think about what they'd been playing in the previous 19 overs were thrown out the window. As uh, you can hear the trucks in the uh, effects mic going out to roll the pitch in the break. I have to say the um, I have to say that was very close to my prediction because I said 110, didn't I? before where you guys were going for 120 and I said no it's going to be somewhere between 100 and 110 so I think for 107 I'm definitely going to say that I've made it into my prediction zone on that one as um, it's uh, just gone two minutes past five here at Cricket Central and uh, we are waiting for a pitch reset as Campbelltown take on the batting well yeah, we'll, we'll said we'll, we will take a break shortly but we'll go through the tail of the tape before we uh, JP you would have to move okay like, you, you, you He's just, just been sitting there for the whole five overs. I don't know. <laughs> JP, right. you know, if you're not commentating, you don't get in the front, okay? You have to go behind. <laughs> anyway, I'm oh, just going to we'll, quickly we'll say... let you guys have some uh, etiquette I'll, talks. I'll, I'll talk end. about <laughs> etiquette, don't worry. But meanwhile, we're getting the tail of the tape in a second. But that was insane. I haven't called a couple of deliveries like that for a long, long time. They just wanted to run. I've never seen a very innocuous running side Sydney it's either 
good or bad, there's nothing in between. Anyway, let's go through the tail of the tape, Matty Mears. Yeah, for the Sydney batting side, uh, Sammy Joe Johnson caught by Cheadle off uh, Bucker up 7 off 13, 1 4, 1 6. Jody Hicks, LBW to Cheadle, that perfect in swinger. 5 off 6 deliveries, 1 4 included in that. Eva Rag run out by uh, the, the combination of Sarah Coit and, and Paris Balbler. 6 off 15 deliveries. Churchill and the skipper caught Cheadle off Coit, a duck off 3 deliveries. Uh, Olivia Maxwell stumped by uh, Paris Balbler off the bowling of Coit. That was that. Uh, Ridiculous scenes we saw there off the wide. 37 off 42 with three boundaries in that. Uh, Gazelle Plummer's run out by Kerry Rollings. Nine off 16 deliveries. Uh, Samara Demeglio caught by Rollings off the bowling of Grace Augustine. Eight off seven deliveries. Emily Power caught by Burton off the bowling of Sarah Coit. One off two. Tim's the keeper. 15 off 11 with one boundary in there. Amy Longhurst, two not out off five deliveries. Seven extras. Four wides, two leg buys, and one buy. Eight for 107. Will it be enough here in the grand final? Campbelltown, Camden Bowling. Lauren Cheadle, four overs, one for 24. Uh, Bakara, four overs, one for 20. Sarah Coit, four overs, three for 12. Pick of the bowl is there. Baldwin, four overs, none for 21. And Augustine, four overs, one for 27. It's going to be interesting to see Nick Kutnyak. Are we going to see a game like we saw early where... A small total was chased down by uh, the uh, Campbelltown Camden Ghosts, or will the Sydney Tigers be able to bowl like they did against the Rangers and keep them down to a ridiculous total? Because if we see what we saw in these opening games, I can't pick it. Look, I'll be honest. It's all about me, me, me. I just want a great finish, and that means <laughs> me get the cooler the finish. In the meantime, look, I, I think the Ghosts should... I'm not going to say coast to victory... But I think they should get the runs within 18 overs. I think they're good enough to do that. But you never know, Cal. You just never know. Sport is is awesome. We, we saw the last couple of balls, what it can produce. And we could probably see that again later on. Yeah, I completely agree with you on that one. I mean, that was a very, very tight... Uh, that was a very tight end. And I think, as I said, you know, I, I think I said earlier that both teams are matched for their... Um, sportsmanship on the field both fielding and batting so let's see what the final what the next uh, set of innings has when Campbelltown Camden take to the uh, take to the batting field okay just quickly it's four for 24 Australian the cricket it's interesting how they're going there poorly and uh, <laughs> in the tennis well Jokovic has got a chance to win the third set he's currently in the tie break with Sinner so six all there and I think it was 3-2. I'll just wait for the score to reappear on our monitor in front of us because it's really intriguing, this uh, matchup. 2-1, sorry. Jokovic leads Sinner there. 2-1 in the tie break of the third set, currently 6 all, And uh, we're just waiting on the score to come through from that India game. Um, India and England doing battle. Uh, I think three, three for Choo Choo Choo. Okay. Uh, so India in reply to England's Is that 246. Or yeah, it's 222 for three. India trailing by 24, 24 runs. Jeez, where's that been? Uh, I'll remember yeah. now. One, two, three. In the meantime, I'm going to take a break. Mizzy, yes. I think you are too. We are. We'll take yeah. a quick break here as the teams warm up for that second innings. 108 is the target here for Campbelltown Camden to take home the Kingsgrove check and the uh, Premier Cricket T20 Cup here for 23-24. Thanks for tuning in here. Triple H 100.1 FM, Hawkesbury, uh, MacArthur Sports Radio and Frogbox here via the Cricket New South Wales YouTube channel. We'll be back in about five or six minutes' time. Don't go anywhere for this huge second innings. I'll just wait, because he might say something, if he does. No worries, thank you.
three minutes. Seconds. Yeah, I'll let him stay off that for a bag. Yes, welcome back to Cricket Central Grand Final Day in the uh, Women's New South Wales Cricket Premier Competition T20 Finals Day. Thanks to uh, Kingsgrove Sports Centre. I said, if you're just tuning in, it's we're right down to the wire here with uh, Campbelltown Camden just about to go out to bat. 108 required off 20 overs for them to take home all the gold and the uh, prize money thanks to our friends at Kingsgrove Sports Centre. I said, thank you if you're listening wherever you are through Triple H 100.1 FM, through Hawkesbury, through MacArthur Sports Radio or on YouTube via Frogbox, the Cricket New South Wales YouTube channel. We uh, very much appreciate you joining in today as uh, the umpires are making their way out. The Sydney Tigers are in their huddle. The two opening batters for the Campbelltown Camden Ghosts are there waiting as well. As I said, all the marbles here. It is for this afternoon. 108 required for the Ghosts. We saw them only have to chase 115 in the morning match, and they were able to do that over St George, Sutherland, and Sydney Tigers in their defence of their 400 and uh, 147 early doors, they kept the ranges to under 100. So, it said, form shows that both can be done from both sides. They can be chased or it can be restricted. So, it's going to be a very interesting 20 overs here to come. As uh, we welcome Kiwi Mick Reinish in yes. to the commentary area. He'll be taking you through the first five overs of this innings. Kiwi, it's going to be, a, I think, a tight one. How does the Kiwi Viz look at this stage? Ooh, I'll go Campbelltown, Camden, 
57, Sydney Tigers 43. I think yeah. they'd be favourites. I think I think you're right. I think it's a lot closer than many people may predict. As said, we saw some of the bowling figures from the Sydney Tigers uh, in that in that first game. It said it will be Sammy Joe, I believe, to take the first yep. over. As said, her figures were one for 16 off four. Um, we also saw, as I said, Neil Bryson Smith opening up one for 12 off four. Churchland, none for 13 off four. So, as I said, and I said, D'Amelio, three for 11 off four. So, they've got the bowling there that can tie down this Sydney tie, uh, the, sorry, this Campbelltown Camden lineup. Yep, so it will be Anika Leroy to face the first ball, right handed batter coming off 90 of 66 balls in the first semi final of the day at 9 a.m. And Sammy Joe Johnson to open the bowling. The target here, 108 to 1. Runs on the board in the final. They need early wickets. Campbelltown Camden will be looking to bat fast early. So first ball of the run chase now. And it's left outside the off stump. There we go. Pretty rare to have a leave in a 2020 match. Yeah, well, not many balls like that are in a T20 match. As I said, we saw Sammy Joe in the earlier game against the Rangers that just hit that sort of almost a good first-class length, that top of off, where it's like, I'm going to bowl it in a good in a good line and length area. It's up to the batter to say, well, am I going to take it on or not? But uh, as I said, it's going to be a good tussle, I think, here in the power play. So Leroy will be the key batter here. Glides it away beautifully there to the third man area. First run off the run chase, no wicket for one. The target, 108. Yeah, nicely just played down there to third. I said the two fielders out for Sydney, as, as we saw in the earlier game there at um, third and fine leg. So not expecting some big expansive shots down the ground or, or hooks or pulls or cuts through the uh, off and on side. So... We sort of telegraph where we'll, we'll see some of this bowling from Sammy Joe. Just good, good hard line and length, making it as hard as possible for the openers for Campbelltown. Paris Bowdler on strike, just with respect, blocks this one back to Sammy Joe. Paris Bowdler, right handed batter as well. Opening up here. They'd be pretty happy with that bowling and fielding effort. The Ghost, the Campbelltown Camden side. Restricting the Tigers to 107. They back themselves. The Tigers are going to need early wickets here to just get them a bit nervous, especially in a final. Sammy Joe Johnson runs it and bowls. Bowdler goes over the top and just over that inner circle. It might actually roll for four. No, it's going to pull up just short, but they will come back for a couple, and it's no wicket for three. Yeah, good chase there from the, the Tigers fielder. We've seen a lot of ones like that just keep rolling out of the reach of the chasing fielder. They're able just to get that one just inside the boundary rope. But I said, they're going to be ones that maybe if in, in a traditional grey ground, they might just pull up a little bit earlier. You don't have to have the full afterburners on to get after them. But here, boy, you're going to have to t chase everything, I think, 110% to try and cut these runs down. So here goes Sammy Joe again as that breeze continues through the day. She's gone over the top again and again. It's just over that circle and it's going to roll away for four. A pretty controlled shot there. The nice straight drive over the bowler's head. Good batting here by Campbelltown Camden. They've come out with a plan here to get the boundaries early on. And it's no wicket for, for seven. Yeah, nice shot there. Just held, held a shape. Held the pose for a little bit, went exactly where she wanted it over the bowler's head. No one back there. First four for the innings. Oh, what a cracking shot that is. That's all the way for six. It smashes into the picket fence here at Cricket Central. The massive pull shot. This is good batting here by Paris Bowdler. She smashed that one. And it's no wicket for 13 after one over. What a start. Well, four, four then six for those last two deliveries. I don't think that's what Sammy Joe had on her plan for the first over. But you heard the crack off yeah. the willow through the effects, Mike. And it just kept sailing for six over uh, deep square leg. That one's straight out of the middle. Even, I think, Sammy Joe's there trying to uh, 
find out where the hell that one, where that shot came from. Wasn't expecting that off the uh, Campbelltown Camden opener, but uh, it said it was a good shot, and it's just uh, the perfect start for the Ghosts. That's exactly what they'd be looking for. They're eating up this target even off the first over. Yeah, what a great aggressive start. Now Bryson Smith to take up the bowling at the commentary stand end here at Cricket Central. The temperature has dropped off from sort of around that 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. area when it was about 40 degrees. Still nice and warm here though, that's for sure. So here we go with some left arm spin. Sits back on this and just pushes it into the onside. Good running, they'll scamper through for a single good urgency there. That was Anika Leroy with that shot. Paris Bowdler coming out striking hard as she takes guard out in the middle. No wicket for 14, the target 108. Winner of this takes the trophy and the title of the Kingsgrove T20 women's competition this year. Bryson Smith on a good length, pushed beautifully through the covers past Sammy Joe, and they'll pick up a single to the fielder on the fence. Good aggressive intent here by Campbelltown Camden. No wicket for 15. So here goes Bryson Smith again. Oh, chance for an LBW! And the umpire says yes! You're gone! And that is Anika Leroy who's gone, who's the danger batter. Coming off that 90 early in the day. That's a big wicket there, nice spin. And the line and length nails her, traps her in front, and it's one for 15. Yeah, we've seen this uh, Cricket Central track, just the ball just biting and turning just uh, just enough for the spin bowlers. As I said, left arm round the wicket, just pitching on those stumps, turning enough to be going on and taking middle and off. And if uh, the Tigers wanted to get in it, that was the big t first target that they needed. They needed Annika Leroy to be back in the pavilion for a low total. They'll take that with her going back for two. And it's yep. after that first over, that's how they needed to bounce back. As I said, I think, I think this is the, only the first of many ebbs and flows we're going to see in these 20 overs as both teams chase down that Kingsgrove Cup. Kelly Rowlings comes to the wicket, the captain of Campbelltown Camden. So that's a big wicket here. Bryson Smith, nice spin bowling. Right-handed batter is Kelly Rowlings. One for, one for 15 in the second over the target, 108. As they've got a lot of the fielders up here with the spin course in these first six overs runs it and bowls now full toss driven down the ground no run though as straight to mid off yeah this is more like what Sydney want to see just keep the dots coming build that run rate required and put the pressure back on the batting side oh chance for LBW again she's gone what good bowling here by Bryson Smith. The Tigers are firing it up with a couple of wickets, a couple of LBWs, and the captain, Kelly Rollings, has gone for a duck off two balls. And this, all of a sudden, is a cracking final now. Game on, two for 15. Yeah, game on for sure. This is not what the plan would have been for the Ghosts, but as said, we saw how good the, the Sydney Tigers were in the earlier game against Northern Districts. They were just there and kept creating chances and putting pressure on the batting side. And they didn't let that first over get to them where they, they probably went for a few more than they were expecting. But said the left arm spin here. It's just getting enough grip in this surface, turning just enough um, to get past the edge of the bat, hit the pads in front of the stumps. And uh, boy, as I said... This game's turned right on ahead here uh, in literally four balls after uh, that big first over. Two wickets here in the second. And now the Ghosts having to scramble a little bit here. Yeah. They're, uh, they're just maybe just now a little bit on that back foot. I wouldn't want to be the uh, boffins at Kiwi Viz. They'll be, Ooh, they'll yeah. be spinning and spinning after yeah. every delivery with what's been going on here. Yeah, it's. Oh, I'll have to come back to that one, but... Those two LBWs were almost identical, the, the exact line and length. So it's Kayla Burton, right-handed batter to the wicket.
Bryson Smith, 0 0.5 overs, two for two. And all of a sudden, we've got game on. Runs it and bowls now. And that's going to be a wide down the leg side. And the keeper's missed it. It rolls towards the boundary. Chasing it down out there was uh, Eva Rag. And eventually, that's going to be three runs, isn't it? Three whites to the yep. total. So. And an extra delivery, yeah. Two for 18. So they need 90 runs now. Here goes Bryson Smith. Bit shorter this time. Just chipped away to point for no run. Two overs gone here. Campbelltown Camden, two for 18. The target, one away. And just as we just say games have and flow and even the day is just how it's cooled off. So a few more dark clouds are starting to circle yeah. cricket central here. I said five overs are required for a match. We do have the Duckworth Lewis Stern on the table somewhere. We, I don't think I don't think it will be required. But as I said, it is another thing to, for the players out there to think about whether they need to be in front of that total. Particularly if they keep losing more wickets as well, it means that total keeps going up. So they want Sammy Joe to bounce back here, whether she can jag a wicket or just uh, only go for a couple off this one. Paris Bowdler back on strike, glides us back with a point, no run. She's 13 off six deliveries with one four and one six. Sammy Joe Johnson, 1.1 overs, no wicket for 13. It's unlike her to cop a bit of tap in that first over that she bowls. It's a good final here. Both teams here on the race to the title. Here goes Sammy Jo Johnson again. Oh, beautifully flicked off the pads. I'll pick up one to the fielder there at fine leg. Two for 19. Yeah, just straying from that offside line, just getting it on the pads, easy to flick off. Maybe just wanting um, Bowdler to be off strike, wanting to attack the new batter. Um, as I said, not the, not the conditions you really want to be walking into with the new batter. As I said, the conditions here are getting easier for the bowlers, get a little bit more movement, not as fatigued as they would have been earlier in the day. Caleb Burton on strike. Oh, that's a good delivery. Sammy Joe Johnson puts the arms on the head. So it was a perfect length there. If she missed that, that would have been LBW or bold. But she just dug it out in the block hole. So they've got a real game on their hands here. Both teams. Energy in the field. A lot of clapping out there. They've got a third man and a fine leg in place with everyone else up inside that circle. As she runs it and bowls. And this has glided away nicely to that third man area. Right in front of our commentary position. Two for 20. Yeah, Plummer down there at third. Cleaning that one up. As I said, I think the ghost now. Just be happy to keep ticking it over. If the ball's there to put away, they will. Particularly now with Bowdler being on strike, getting off to that cracking start. But as I said, if with the clouds around, you want to make sure that you're not losing those wickets, making it harder for DLS if it does need to come into play. Bowdler on strike. Full toss, puts it away off her pads, and that should roll away to that picket fence for four. And yes, it does. Good work by Bowdler. She's nailing the bad ball. She's on top of Sammy Joe Johnson here. Just puts away the full toss off the pads for four. Two for 24. Yeah, that was a nice delivery. I said, we, you see Sammy Joe's best when it's sort of on that off stump, just outside off stump line. Whereas last couple of deliveries just been on the legs. No protection out there past the square leg fielder inside the circle. Just pushes this one into the offside. They're going to go for the run. Chance of a run out. And not out. So direct hit would have been gone. It was one bounce to the keeper who wasn't up at the stumps there. If she was up at the stumps a bit more, it probably would have been a run out. As we have a look at the replay on Frogbox. Three overs gone, two for 25. Yeah, just kept, I think everybody was caught off guard there. Um, I said a little bit of a misfield, but probably wasn't a single there. But by the time it sort of bounced past the stumps, got into the keeper's gloves and then had to go back again to the stumps, it was enough time for the batter to make her ground. And uh, 
they said maybe not the time they needed to go for the quick single but it does keep um it, it, it sort of does keep that scoreboard ticking over which is probably what the ghosts want they don't want to get caught in a hole and see that run rate start to climb so Bowdler is 19 off 9, Burden 1 off 3. Sammy Jo Johnson, 2 overs, no wicket for 20. So she's actually been quite expensive, which is rare. Here goes Bryson Smith, who bowled a great first over. It's uppish, and it's gone! She's caught here, and that was Paris Bowdler as well. Gone caught. On the circle, taking the catch there was Amy Longhurst. What a game we have, and it's three for 25. Well, we saw we saw uh, Bowdler take Sammy Joe down the ground over the bowler's head. This time, I said, we've been seeing with Bryson Smith just a little bit more grip in the surface than we're used to seeing at some of the other grounds, and it wasn't quite off the middle of the bat, and it was just skewed over to Longhurst there at mid-off inside the circle, and... Uh, I said, it's been great bowling here by the left arm orthodox, really putting her team in this game. Yeah. I said, maybe not the shot, but we've, that's how she's been going so far. Bowler is taking it on, but maybe now putting some pressure on the middle order here as we uh, wait to see who the new batter is here. Looks for like it's uh, Claire McGurk is the new batter at the wicket. Nell Bryson Smith, 1.1 overs, 3 for 5. So outstanding. Kiwi Viz. Sydney Tigers, 51. Campbelltown Camden, 48. Super over one. Am I doing my maths right? <laughs> What's it, what the, uh, my brain was spinning yeah, there trying no, to fit in the that. one. You got, you That's got right. There. Yeah, you got there. Yeah. 51, 48, one. Well, hang yes, on. Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, the, the rain out doesn't come into it because obviously DLS will come into it. She's gone for the sweep, and that's definitely not LBW. I think they're trying to fox the umpire there not to give the wide. They succeeded, maybe just coming off the pad. So Claire McGurk, right-handed batter again at the wicket, and Bryson Smith has absolutely got it on a string here with this left-arm spin. Quite a reasonable run-up for a spinner. She's got them uh, caught in a web here with the spin as she runs it and bowls now. And up in the block hole, a tough a shout. Umpire says no. I think the biggest giveaway, there's not much of an appeal there from the bowler. Going down the leg would be my, uh, we'll say expert opinion, but uh, yep. that could be debated. <laughs> okay. I know Oh. Oh, it is a chance a for LBW, appeal. and oh, she's gone! Here we go! What a great spell here by Bryson Smith. They can't get her off the square. And another LBW. The Sydney Tigers are on fire. Look at them go. They're celebrating like crazy out there. And that one has just taken the top of middle. That's plum. And all of a sudden, Campbelltown Camden are four for 25. This score of 107 is looking huge. It certainly is, and as the <laughs> more clouds come in, it was, this was not something that was on my bucket list today, was that we could be facing... The, I, I, I can see your radar, Kutnyak, but I'm, I have eyes and can look up. It's coming from nowhere. <laughs> but it said, this, this clouds were not on my, ra on my bucket list this morning. It was, how was I going to survive the heat? But boy, yeah. what, a, what a 20 overs we're in here for. The Ghosts certainly aren't out of this. It's not a huge run rate, but if they can keep taking wickets, four for five, Neil Bryson Smith, mm. do you keep bowling up? That's going to be the next question. So Does she keep going? Sarah Coit comes to the wicket, and the Sydney Tigers have just rattled up these wickets. And Bryson Smith, three LBWs, all plum, pretty much middle stump as well. If I was Sydney, I'd be going, we want to bowl. We want to make sure we get to that five-over mark. Syracoid on strike. Tosses it up again, slices it. She's going to pick up one here as point miss fields. Four for 26. One ball left in the fourth. So on strike now is going to be Kayla Burden, who's hardly had any strikes since she's come out there. Last ball of the second. 
plays it late. Again, back with a point. Good tidy fielding, and that'll be no run. So four overs gone here, Campbelltown Camden. Four for 26. The target, 108. Well, I can tell you, according to the, uh, the good old uh, DLS, at four wickets down to win the game, the Ghosts need to be... 35 plus 1. After 5 overs. After 4 overs. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Oh, well, I said, but 5 overs constitutes a game. A match, yeah. What would uh, they have to be after 5 then? Let's have so a look they at need that. to be 39. Okay. So they need to be 38 plus 1. If they lose a wicket in this over, it goes up to 46 plus 1. So, as mm. I said, this is a big over here for both sides. And Kira Church on the captain coming in to bowl. I think this is a good move. Sydney Tigers, they bowled Northern Districts out for 74 earlier today. And they've got Campbelltown Camden at 4 for 26. Right arm spinner, the captain. Runs in and bowls now. And just the batter guides it back with a point. That's Sarah Coy. Plenty of talk out there by the Sydney Tigers. Plenty of energy. You would hope so. Yep. And <laughs> they're on the top. Six. I know. I know. I'm just saying. <laughs> so she... <laughs> And she's gone. She's gone. She's caught and bowled. Oh, my goodness me. They are falling apart now, Campbelltown Camden. Sarah Coit has gone. The captain, Churchland, draws her into the drive and caught and bowled. And it's five for 26. Wow. It's Nick Kutnyak joins us in the comms. What, I, don't, I don't even think I can believe what we're seeing, particularly after that first over with Sammy Joe going for 13. Yeah. Now we're at five for 26 in the fifth. Boy, I don't know. I'm losing words here. All I can say is Sydney are making sure this is done before the rains come. This is great work by Sydney, smart thinking. But, again, it's just good bowling. And Campbelltown Camden are shocked at the moment. They are – can you believe they're five down for 26? It is – it's amazing. I think – Mike Sheen would have been bouncing up and down going, 108, that's something we can chase easily. Well, you're four down. Well, you're five down now for 26. You're gone. Well, I said we saw it. That's why I said I was, when we were in the pre-show, we were, I was very intrigued because it could go either way. We saw what the Tigers were like against the Rangers and were just miserly with the ball. But we also saw the Ghosts chase down a, a similar mm. target very easily early this morning. So it was always going to be a 50-50 of how this game was going to go. And at the moment, it's going the way of the Tigers. And it's Lily Hrushak who will be facing now right-handed batter. They are just spinning them out of the match here. The Sydney Tigers got that 108. They grind it away, but they've backed it. This is a shocking delivery, and that's punt smashed away to that deep point area for a single. Probably really should have hit that for 5 for 27. And now on strike is going to be Caleb Burden. Yeah, watching some carnage down the other end. She's just been watching wicket after wicket fall. And Sydney Tigers here on fire. Oh, and that's dropped on the batter late. Crowd catch. The old crowd catch. Two balls left here in the fifth to make sure we've definitely got a match. So it's going to be all good. There is a decent little crowd here at Cricket Central. Flights it up again. Oh, and it's nice spinning to the batter who just awkwardly hits it back with a point for no run. Nick Kutnak about to take up the commentary after this. We could have a shorter match than expected the way it's going. Goes down the ground and drives it through the covers for a single. And it's a nice shot there. So after five overs here, Campbelltown Camden, five for 28. Over to you, Nick Kutnak. Well, isn't this amazing? Azuzic on one. Burton is on one. And it is five down for 28. We are seeing what is an amazing contest, JP. Disappointing in some regards because we're expecting Campbelltown Camden to really be in the hunt. Look, it's 5 for 28. We've seen the Windies do it. Yes. Surely this could happen. It, well, as they say, Nick, T20 is a funny game. Mm. And we've seen crazy things have happened. Yeah, well, anything can happen here. Let's see. Nell Bryson Smith comes back to the attack. They're going to continue her. She's on a forfer. Looking for the five. Can she get it? She comes in around the wicket. Burton. 
slashes through the offside. Will be a single. She moves her score to three. And it is five for 29. As Azuzic is now on the striker's end. JP Yorking at the uh, DLS. I don't think we'll need it, though. The overcast grey skies we're looking at the moment don't look great. As Bryson Smith goes to Huzuzic. It was a fuller ball. It's on the full when she played it. And the fielder there adds a widish gully, if you want to call it that. Or behind point stops it for no run. This will be counted as a match, and if we bowled the five overs. Yeah, correct. We've bowled five, so it is a match. Bryson Smith. Azuzic plays it across the line. Fielder adds a fine. We'll get to it. Well, in fact, it'll be the fielder deep mid. We'll throw it back in. Azuzic on two. Burton on three. It's five for 30. So, look, you know, mathematically, they are charts, but they can't afford to lose wickets. Simple as that. Bryson Smith around the wicket, having a slash is Burton. Fielder point gets oh. to it, then she falls over. Oh. And this is not good, JP. Oh. She's uh, struggling to get up. Ankle? Yeah, it's left ankle, I think. Gee, she fell in a divot. It was awkward. She fell in a divot. We, we won't be able to see it on the replay screen we've got in front of us because it was just off the vision. But, jeez, that was not good, JP. Oh, that's... That oh. was gnarly. Yep. She fell awkwardly. It's Burton. Faces Bryson Smith. It's a fuller ball. She tries to sweep across the line. I don't know if a touch bad here. I think they might call wides. They've run two. We're waiting on the call from the umpire. No, it's touch bad, so it's two runs. Burton now on five. It's five for 32. So Bryson Smith had a, a good first two overs, but maybe they've overextended, overextended her stay. She's four for 10 now. She comes in around the wicket. Burton knuckles down, blocks, no run. End of the over. It's five for 32. Burton on five. Azuzic on two. Bryson Smith, three overs, four for 10. So, well, JP, we've got a match here. We've got a, we've got a humdinger of an ending. Well, the thing here for the Campbelltown Camden side is let's probably make 50 or 55 mm. when we reach the 10 over mark. Them just, and I know it's crazy to say this in a T20 game, just play sensible shots. Well, <laughs> can they is the question. <laughs> Overcast conditions, as we've mentioned today. But at the moment, looks okay. Just getting messages coming through. Well, we've all been saying it wrong by the sounds of it. I'm only going by what I've been told. Hurishok. Okay, we'll go with that. Thank you, Mike. He's on the back foot. No run. We need howling here at Cricket Central. Grey clouds just... As in oh. shock, able to play it past the fielder and will be a single. Still don't know how you can get that from Z and C... Z, C, Z. I get confused. Smith, Jones, Panita. Oh, the 12th man list. Don't you know on there. No, you're not. <laughs> Burton back on strike on five... behind on the DLS but like you said may not be required although we're going Burton cuts it no run point able to cut it off oh. Burton again able to play that through the covers will be a single Reshock makes her way to the strikers end One of she's targeting that gap just down the ground towards our left hand, hand side of the screen. It is an almighty tempting gap there to smash it over the top. Okay. Rest shock. Well, she bobbed that up. Dot ball. Good to see Mike Sheen here today. <laughs> yeah. Um, once there, the man of Campbelltown, he's not here today. 
Churchill and comes in. Hiroshock able to play that through the covers for a single, looking for two, but not coming. And at the end of the over, it will be five for 35. Hiroshock on two, Burton on five. Still trailing by 17 runs and again on the DLS. Bowling wise, I, it's 5 for 35 here, Nick. But you've got to think now, you've got to have your field, field as like, have your field placement like an aggressive style. Just got to try and force the final five wickets. Like, in theory, they could win this game, keeping them under 108, but you've got to keep your field, place, field placement aggressive. You're not wrong, JP. Uh, start of the over from Bryson Smith. She's going to bowl it all out. Reshock able to play to the offside for new run. Bryson Smith. Around the wicket. Reshock decides to try to sweep that through the onside. It's going to race to the fence. It's four runs behind square. Hereshok makes her score now eight. It's five for 39. Burton on six. And JP, since we've come in, there's been no wickets. I can, I know. I'm not bringing the standards up. That's fair enough. No, I reckon we might be the saving grace for Campbelltown, Camden. <laughs> What? Bryson Smith comes in and it's mm. left by Hereshok. Interesting leave. Thought just put it just just an old standard block shot there. I want to see when Kiwi Mick comes on if we actually write that he's the block oh. as it's played. Oh. Uh, well, be lucky to miss the stumps to be honest. No run for Hereshok. Bryson Smith. Bowling at the moment. Reshock blocks it. No run. You could just hear the, the fielder sense. There's, there's another wicket to come here. So again, it's Bryson Smith who comes in. It's a lobby ball. Reshock is able to play back at the fielder. Extra cover. And it's no run at the end of the over. It's 5 for 39. Hereshock on 8. And Burton is on 6. Target of 108. Run rate of 4.88 here at the moment. Or according to the scoreboard, 4.875. Okay, JP. If you're Campbelltown Camden, you're yeah. 8 overs in. So you got... 12 hours remain. You're 5 for 39. It's a good recovery. Can they keep it up? Can they? Sensible cricket shots. I don't. I feel like they don't need a play. Shh. How do you call it? Just lob the ball over the top. Look for your singles and twos. If you get the odd four in an over, that's pretty cool. All it just comes down to sensible cricket shots. And just find those gaps while they're there. To Miglio. Start. She comes in a bowl to Burton, who tries to twist that to the onside. No run. Sammy Joe Johnson at mid wicket to stop that off. Short mid wicket to be exact. Comes in again to Miglio. Play to the onside by Burton. Filter it deep. Mid gets to it. Throw comes in. Just a single. So Burton now on seven. The rest shock on eight. It's five for 40. The Meglio comes in. Oh. And well, she nearly got a touch on that Harris shock, but lucky not to. Forced to play it, though. Lovely line in length on that fourth and fifth stub line. Wasn't sure. She sort of just. Hang the bat, hang in, lucky not to get, to get the nick. <gasps> and play to miss the gain by Hareshok. They're going to go for the single throw. Comes to the uh, non-striker's end, but it's no. Well, it's all good. 
never going to hit the stumps either. And buys a call. So to the touch to the bat of Hareshok. Five for 41. Four extras. Burton on seven. Hareshok on eight. Burton faces the Demeglio ball. She's able to get a touch on that. She swept it. They're going to go for two. As the keeper gets to it, throw comes in. And confirmation that's touched bat. Burton moves her score to nine. It's five for 43. Well, JP, this is really intriguing now because if they can get the 50 at the halfway stage, they're saying it's a chance. It's a chance. And uh, we'll go through the Kutnyak predictor in a second. <laughs> <laughs> Around the wicket, Demiglio bowls, and Burton plays it to the fielder there at oh. deep cover. Throw comes in, and she's out. Yes. Her rest shot couldn't make a ground, and she's walking straight to the pavilion. Looks like a bit slow off the mark here. Well, let's watch the replay coming to us now. Oh, yeah. yeah. She she actually stopped. She went. The follow-through is very important for a, bat, a batter, right? Because what you need to do is as soon as you think there's a run, you get ready to go. She sort of dabbed and she was sort of saying at the crease, once the bowler bowls, you get out and then as soon as you can work out the situation, because you can make it back in enough time. Mm. She decided to stop start and that's where she started. At the wrong moment, JP. The replay just justified that. For Hesitation. Us. Hesitation. Yep. And let's... I, we both agree that wasn't easily a single there. Easily. Oh, yeah. And there's a single every day of the week, including Sunday. And just the... You probably would say maybe half a second to a second there of being just standing just, just cost her that single. And now it's like... Like, you st okay, six for 43, eight and a half overs. Still, look, look, look there's still a chance... They're not, they're not in that stage where they've got to go for for boundaries at the moment. It's I know in this form of game, you need to smack the ball all over the park. You, you just need to play sensible cricket shots along the ground. Okay, so change of bowler here. And it will be in Eva Rag. Did well at the bat. She comes in the bowl. Start of the new over. Played to the offside by Burton. No run. So it's five for forty three. And of course, Lauren Cheadle at the non striker's end. Rag comes in. Burton lays it to the fielder at cover for no run. Just waiting for the scoreboard to update on our monitor. It is 6 for 43 that we can confirm. Eva Rag to come in. JP's looking at the uh, DLS. Oi. Oi. Rag comes in. Shorter ball and Burton nearly uh, chipped it onto a stump. So lucky she didn't. So it remains 6 for 43. 22 runs behind the DLS, Nick. Mm. For those who were playing at home. Okay. I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters now, JP. They're six down. If they win, well, you can call me Norma. It's down <laughs> in the back foot. Played to the offside by Burton. They're looking for two. Not going to happen, but the fielder cover gets to it. Well, <laughs> like seriously. <laughs> now, because I've got the old ads in my head. The old Hawkesbury Valley old. Buy a cash and be fun, Norma. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they, those ads, that's my childhood right there. 1330, No, no, not that ad, not that ad. There's a rag will come around the wicket, the Cheadle. And Cheadle plays that to the offside, but uh, JB, you're nervous that uh, I was going to miss bat, but it clearly hit the bat. I thought it was a little bit of tatter swing there. Just, just a nice full face to bat there from Cheadle. Six for 44. Last ball before the 10th. Target 108. Okay. Comes in around the wicket rag again. Played to the offside for no run. So, 
That's the end of the 10th. It's 6 for 44. Burton on 10. Cheadle's on 0. So Burton on 9 or 10 because it had 10 and then it's gone back to 9. <laughs> and it's, it's, it says 6 for 44. So what's the score? <laughs> what's the player's score? It doesn't matter. In the end, Kiwi McRadish, you're back in commentary. JP, you going to continue? Yeah. Yeah, so Callum's going to join us. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. 6 for 44. So they only actually lost one wicket in that five over block, but Sydney Tigers are definitely on top here. Ten overs to go, and they need 62. And, well, when you look at it, they pretty much only only need just over, and it's oh, going to be a run out. Oh, my goodness. Forget about what they need because this is another wicket. That's an absolute disaster. Both players have been caught at one end at the striker's end. A huge mix-up. They ran one. They went to come back for the second. That's, that's Both of them ended up at one end, and that is gone. And that they'll get a single there, but that's seven for 45. That should have been two. Sorry, Kiwi Mick. Definitely. That's two there. That's just poor communicating on the field there for calling a run. You've got to call that two there because, because to be frank, it was, it, was it was thrown from the deep. I'm going, look, and I know this field looks small on screen, but got to make, the, how do you call it, key? make that field was thrown a ball under pressure there. Yeah. But unfortunately, and like you said, there was both both bat batters running to one end of the ground, one end of the crease. I says, oh, hold on a second. Let's throw the ball down to the bowl's end. Run out. Seven down for 44. And I can predict the... Kiwi Mick predictor, I will be saying, presuming the, the, the Sydney Tigers yes. 85. Yeah, Sydney Tigers 88, Campbelltown Camden 12, super over, no comment. <laughs> no there's, comment. there's no comment. M slash A. <laughs> yes, N slash A, no comment, uh, yeah. refusing to dignify that response with an answer, etc, etc. <laughs> um, I think it's not so much a case of Campbelltown need to win i think it's more a case of Campbelltown need to survive and just get through this uh just get through the next set of five overs yeah. in one piece and this is a pretty average delivery and she puts it away they should run back for a second and surely not another run out no they're all good this time so seven for 47 and lauren Cheetle at the wicket of course left-handed batter with grace augustine at the non-striker's end. And Samira Demiglio bowling here. So a low scoring final. And she glides us back with a point for no run. Lauren Cheadle, outstanding bowler with those left arm fast swing deliveries. But she's going to have to try and find something with the bat here. She's two off four. Here goes Demiglio again. Flights it up there. Gives it a big hoik on the half volley. Very tidy fielding there by Kira Churchland, the captain. No run. Well, um, just taking a look around the grounds as well. We've got uh, Australia 4 for 46. Um, Djokovic in the uh, Australian Open 2 for 4. And, um, well, we've, I'm not really sure what the score is in England v India because... Uh, it's probably the lunch break. It's probably a commercial break, yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, we'll find out. But um, another dot ball here. So Demiglio to complete the 11th over. She goes for it. It's Ariel. And it's just short of the oh. fielder on the fence. It's done the old spin past the fielder. And they're actually going to pick up a couple of runs here to that fielder on the fence. And in fact, they're going to get an overthrow as well. As they shy at the keepers end. It's all happening here at Cricket Central. And after 11 overs, it's 7 for 50. To describe that field in Kiwi was, it was just horrible. It was all over the place. I mean, yep, my goodness, it was just horrific. I believe it's what we'd call all over the shop. So let's have a look now. They need 58 runs of 54 deliveries. So if they had wickets intact here, you'd almost back them in at pretty much a run and ball. The problem is... They've lost seven wickets. Into the attack now is going to be Eva Rag, who's a good all-round player, very handy with the bat, and she'll be bowling now to 
Lauren Cheadle, left-handed batter, clips this off the pads. Sammy Joe Johnson in tight inside the circle on the onside. No chance of a single there. And it's just going outside just before. It's called right down here. It really has cooled down to a nice, comfortable temperature for the players. Big swing and a miss outside the off stump. Through to the keeper, no run. I'm informed that it's still muggy and warm if you're heading down to the harbour to watch the uh, the concert on the Opera House. So um, it's probably just a mix, just a mix of weather. Um, you know, nice and cool in the in the uh, inner western suburbs, humid and muggy out by the harbour in the CBD. And swivels this round the corner to that fielder on the fence. And that 45 degree angle right down there on the boundary near the scoreboard. Seven for 51. Of course, the target 108 here. Tell you what, it would be an absolute miracle if they can pull this off with the bat. Who could be a hero here? You never know with cricket. Yeah, the problem is with heroes is that they tend to uh, crash and burn pretty quickly when someone tries to do heroics. Augustine on strike, right-handed batter. Very solid defensive shot there Very for no block. rock. Yep. Very good block there. And um, but as I said, you know, um, you, you're talking about someone trying to be going to heroics and that um, isn't the thing in sports though is that when someone tries to be a hero it often makes everything become unstuck yeah that's right they're going to have to find something and again just a solid defensive shot but they're going to need more than that one ball left in the 12th Campbelltown Camden 7 for 51 they've been blasted out here by some quality spin bowling Nell Bryson Smith, what a spell. And even Eva Rag, 1.5 overs, no wicket for two. She's been tidy. And another Yorker here up in the block hole. They'll squeeze it away for a single though. And after 12 overs, it's seven for 52. So what do you think they need to, that means they need what about, and you can check my maths, maths here on this. 57 maths, required. Yeah, 57. 56 um, now. 56, 56 of 48 delivery. Still, look, they're just sensible cricket shots. 56 of 48. So what, they need about seven and over pretty much, is that right? It's still sensible. Yep. Seven, yeah, seven. Kiwi. So it's not the run, because they bowled them out for such mm. a lowish score, they're still in the game with the run rate. Yes. It's just the wickets. But you just need a couple of good overs here, and you never know, but... Lauren Cheadle's a, a quality player, and it will be Augustine on strike. So Churchland, two overs, one for five. Another tidy bowler. Sydney Tigers, they're bowling today. They bowled Northern Districts out for 74. And there's a half a chance. Popped into the onside for no run. And eventually uh, 7.53. I think going into a bit of a consolidation phase in the sense of that they kind of know that the game's up, but they're trying not to lose all their players and rack up more of those wickets. Pretty much. I think they'll just hang in and try and just roll the singles around and hold their wickets, and if they can get it down to the last couple of overs, you never know. If they can get up to 70 runs, I think that, that would be a pretty good way to end that'd be a pretty good note to end on if you ask me but um, yeah we shall see what happens and by the way i'm not saying that that's a prediction i've not got a number in mind to predict the outcome of this game yeah i think they'd be disappointed with 70 i think they'll try and fight to the end but it's the odds are against them that's a bad ball and it's been slammed down the ground for a single too long on so there there we go three balls three singles if they keep doing that they and not lose wickets they'll almost get home here and they haven't taken a risk so the run rate isn't a problem it's one of those sort of funny low scoring games here goes cheetah on strike drives oh. it down the ground a beautiful shot and that is one bounce two bounces over the row for four nice shot there by lauren cheetah just launches the tigers captain over the top seven for 59. just a like I was about to say it's a sensible cricket shot. It's just building the fielder there at long on, but just just beautifully timed. Glides this one to point for no run. Nice comeback delivery, just getting that line and length perfect. 
so you can't really get it away. Hope you're enjoying the coverage here on on Triple H, MacArthur Sports, Hawkesbury Radio and Frogbox if you're watching us for finals cricket here on Australia Day. Runs and involves the last of the 13th. Driven into the onside to that player on the fence down at long on. And after 13 overs here, Campbelltown Canton, 7 for 60. So they're definitely beginning to find their mojo. I just wonder whether it's... Uh I'm just wondering whether it's uh, starting to be get into that territory of uh, it's a bit too close for comfort. Yep, they need... 48. 48 off 42. So, yeah, the run rate isn't really a problem. That boundary and that if over really helps. If they can get through to the 15th over without losing a wick mm. and just take them over, you just never know. Mm. Then you just need some big boundaries and then the Tigers would be nervous. So they did get them out for 107 earlier on. So they're always kind of in the game. And this is a good shot into That's the onside. That's going to be four boundary over that mid-wicket area. Cracking shot again by Lauren Cheadle. All of a sudden, this game is coming to life again at 7 for 64. Saw that. It was directly in the sweet spot. Pulled, bang, four, and 60. So at 44. 44, yep, needed. Is that right? Yes. And this one pushed into the offside for no run. So 40, 44 of 40. Mm -hmm. Yep. We get into that stage where we're doing the runs against the balls and the countdown. Like you still, like I'll say this: if if you're 20 with two overs left to go, I still think that's manageable. Yep, that's for sure. And Eva Rag here bowling. Nice shot, oh. and this could be another boundary. So here go Campbelltown Camden, and the crowd downstairs is loving it. And they are breathing this life into the this game again with a little bit of a surge here with this partnership. Seven for 68. 40 required now here, Kiwi. And, um, well, two boundaries in over. This certainly helps this now, this run chase. Lauren Cheadle is 20 off 17 with three boundaries. Again, sensible cricket shot there again. Yep. Just playing along, the, playing along the carpet. And here we go. So Sydney Tigers now having a few chats with the captains and players out there. I think they're starting to get a little bit nervous now. They're seeing the numbers starting to rack up Yeah, and on once, the board. once you get on a roll in 2020, it can be hard to stop. Another there loose we one. Go. Slams it for four. Did it here go over go. the fence? No, it didn't. It's the Ghosts here with another four. And it's seven for 72. All of a sudden, they're looking very confident. And Cheadle now is, is 24 off 18. Three fours in this over, Kiwi. We could have a real grandstand finish coming up here. Stay tuned on wherever frequency you're listening in on. Here goes Rag again. Another beautiful drive straight to the field of this time. The Tigers can take a little bit of a breath. This is a dot ball. So, yep, they, of course, tied them down to that 107, and it's coming to fruition now with this partnership. Can they keep it going? Could we have a great finish here in this final? Here goes Rag again. She'll glide it to point, and they're going to take on the fielder. And she's out? home. She's home. So 14 overs gone. Campbelltown Camden 7 for 73, so they need... 35. 35 off 36. Yes. So it's under a run of ball. 13 runs from that over, Kerry. I, I yeah. didn't, I, to be fair, I did not expect that that sort of big block over during that over. I thought you would have had that in maybe in the final five. But, geez, it. I don't want to say it helps the batting side. So, sort of. So it, it gives that batting side just a little bit of chill. It says, hold on. We've got that one big over before we needed that one big over. So imagine if they get if they get maybe another one big over in the next probably two or three. Now you can sense the Cheadle and Augustine for the Campbelltown Candom side. Just getting a wee bit of confidence. Yep, you can see it. And all of a sudden the Tigers here a little bit back on their heels and surprised. Demeglio bowls. Puts it away. There's a fielder on the fence. And she covers it off. She slips over. But eventually does the fielding. They'll pick up one, seven for 74. 
if I was Cheadle here at the moment, chatting to Augustine, I would say, um, Lauren, take the, take the next six six overs. You're the one that's hit them crisply. Yeah. Take them all. As the sun breaks through again here at Cricket Central, all sorts of weather patterns on today. Here goes Augustine. Hasn't had much strike. And a chance of an L. She's bowled. That is a big wicket here. Augustine is gone. And it just takes the pressure valve off for the Sydney Tigers. Augustine well, has gone for three, and now it's eight for 74. Just before we uh, continue with the cricket, there are some breaking news coming in. Novak Djokovic has crashed out of the Australian Open. Oh. He's just lost his semi-finals match. Here we go. So, big news. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, also not a good run if you're an Australian fan. It's uh, 58 for five there at the Gabba in Brisbane. West Indies really on the roll today. Enforce the follow on. Oh, no. <laughs> Enforce the follow on. What would the odds have been on that? A thousand to one. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> Fatty Voughton. <laughs> and uh, coming to the wicket now. <laughs> Sorry, I, ju I just had to say that. How's that? <laughs> How's that? Not yeah. out. Keisha Baldwin coming to the wicket now. And just when they had that momentum, but importantly, Lauren Cheadle still at the wicket. On 26 off 21 with four boundaries. Joining her is Keisha Baldwin. So let's have a look now. There's 34 deliveries left and they need... 34. So 34 off 34. This is going to be a very close game. So I'm telling myself Lauren Cheadle's got to take majority of the 34 deliveries. Yeah, the only thing is they've got two wickets left. The they might just fall, but fall short, but you never know. 2020. Could be a cracking finish coming up. So Demiglio, 2.2 overs, 1 for 10. Another bowler with good figures out here. And it will be Keisha Baldwin on strike. And all of a sudden it just clouds over again here at Cricket Central. Just past 6 o'clock here, Sydney time on a Friday night on Australia Day. Or 8.12 in Auckland. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, 12 minutes past five if you live in Queensland. What's the time in London now? Oh, it must we'll, be we'll about seven o'clock in the morning. Must be about seven, 12 minutes past seven in the morning. It's They'll be getting full. into their rush hour. Yep, and uh, it'll be a working day there. And this is just pushing to the onside for no run. Could we get it down to the last couple of overs here? You never know. Here goes Demiglio. This left arm spin. Baldwin will just patiently play this into the offside. I think they're going to try and feed Cheadle the strike, who's on a, an energy surge here with her batting. Two deliveries left here in the 15th. Here goes Demiglio again. And again, she'll just push into the offside. They're going to try and make them nervous at the end here. As uh, Cheadle just gives some instructions of what to do. Probably say maybe just block it out and I'll take the next one. Say so make a few field changes here. Come into the commentary box. Next will be Nick Kutnak and Matt Mears to take us through to the finish of this one. Full toss or a full ball. Push into the offside. No run. So 15 overs gone. Campbelltown Camden 8 for 74. They need 34 off 30 to take you through the finish of this match and final. Nick Kutnak with Matt Mears. Well, here we go, Mearsy. The home stretch where it is 74 for 8. And clearly, unless some divine, I don't know, intervention, something, Sydney have got this. You, you say that, but mm -hmm. I've been calling and watching sport for way too long to know that this is a given. No. Something something in a T20 game always has to change in these last five overs. Will it be Cheadle continuing her good form to 26 off 21? Will Sammy Jones, she's gone for 20 off two overs. Will mm. that continue? Yeah, fair call. I, I think I think they should get this, though. Guess who's bowling? Sammy Joe Johnson. But as I say, she's gone for 20 off her two overs. Exactly, that's my well, point. Like, but, I said, but she could come on and, and bowl a maiden. Who knows? All right, first ball is smashed through the offside, but the fielder point gets to it, so it's no run. But, well, Cheadle, she was trying to smash past that point fielder. Didn't. I'm very intrigued now what's going to happen here. 
if Sammy Joe Johnson can get the next wicket. Or can Cheadle somehow manufacture a comeback again? She's on 26. Sammy Joe Johnson around the wicket. Shorter ball. Cheadle smashes it through to cow corner. Bounces to the rope. Four runs. Cheadle moves to 30. It's eight for 78. Well, that's her area. Can't bowl there. No protection back. There's only two on the leg side. A deep square behind the umpire and at fine leg in front of the in front of the scoreboard. They are moving mid on back now, but boy, as I said, I think it's a major rethink's needed here because I said I don't think Cheadle's going to die wondering. She's she wants that check from Kingsgrove Sports Centre. She's going to keep going. We see the field move around a little bit. I think it's going to give her a bit more protection to go a bit more towards the body for Cheadle. I think she was trying to stay outside off stump, make her play the cut shot. But uh, with the now three out on the leg side, she can stay a bit straighter. And this time she smashes it through. The covers will be stopped by deep cover. Only be a single for Cheadle. She moves her score to 31. Baldwin is on zero. It's eight for 79. So they trail here by 29 runs. Oh, this is a great finish. <laughs> Anything well, can happen. We know that. We know that. I said I knew that. I said I knew it wouldn't be a high-scoring one, but there'd be a lot of intrigue, and that's what we've been delivered so far. I said Lauren Cheadle, the uh, the newest Australian Test representative. She uh, is certainly keeping her Campbelltown ghost in this one. Baldwin faces Sammy Joe Johnson. Play to missed. No edge on that. But they were going up a little bit. Going, oh, that was close. Yeah, off stump. The old, the old coat of varnish. Mm. You heard in the effects, Mike. A lot of oohs and ahs out there. I think we're going to hear some more of them as we get closer and closer to that 20 over mark. So again, Sammy Jo Johnson, top of her run-up. She makes her way into Baldwin. Baldwin tries to get bat on that, but Ooh. wide court. Well, technically it's a white ball wide, but I, 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 you know what my issues are with it. <laughs> Mate, it was six, in line. Sixth grade park cricket wouldn't be a wide. That's all exactly. I worry about when I'm bowling. Well, that's the problem. Park <laughs> cricket now would call it a wide because they see it on the television. Oh, don't get me started on that. I know. Half the rules, they think there's DRS as well. Anyway, Sammy J comes in, short of ball. She's popped it up here, Baldwin. There's no filter there, but they're going to run a single. Now, I've got an issue with this. It was the last ball of the over. Means Baldwin's going to be back on strike. She's on one. Cheadle's on 31. It's eight for 81. I don't think you can count, Nick, because there's still one ball left in this over. Well... <laughs> okay, no, well, 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 normally, normally, they, don't tick it. No, normally, but normally they, they don't tick it over, and on the board, it already had 15.5, so there's one ball left, still, Cheadle, if she doesn't hit this, like, there's no run, so now it's the end of the over, 8 for 81, oh, the board has got me, this time it's the end of the over, it flicked over, it doesn't flick over that quick, it still hasn't flicked over, <laughs> See what I mean? It hasn't flipped over yet. Now it has. It's Mate, 881. We're, we're, we're in a gripping match here, and all you can worry about is. No, because the scoreboard is quite. And the scoreboard. No, because if the scoreboard's setting me up, like it said 15.5 as the ball was being bowled. So that would mean the end. Uh, anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, unless the. Egg, that's right. They could have, was there, yeah, there was a wide in that over. That's why, because th it doesn't count the wides on this system. That's right. Well, yeah. anyway, it's I don't know what I can tell you. <laughs> no, I've worked it out. There's another over starting. I know. I've worked it out. I've worked it out. It's all good. I think we're settled. <laughs> I think we're settled. So Baldwin's on strike. She's on one. The Miglio comes in. It's dabbed by Baldwin. No run. Mm, don't know about that. I think he needs to find a single here. There are gaps. There are pockets to go for next to the umpire or, or past the keeper. Needs to get you back on strike is the thunder now. Uh, not the Sydney thunder. He starts to hear it. Cricket Central. Blocked from Baldwin. But goes back to my point, even though it was the fifth ball, irrelevant. But when it's five and six, you don't go for the singles then, do you? 
on five and six in no. that situation. And, and I think that's the thing is the Mego comes in, Meglio, and it's going to be a quick single as she has been given out, run out. Well, Baldwin, I thought she was just going to be close, but looks like she couldn't get a bat in time. And she is just short by a millimetre and a half. Baldwin's out for one. Cheadle 31. It's nine for 81. Yeah, deep in a crease playing that one. Just and a few maybe tread, treadmill steps as well as she took off and just yeah couldn't get down there. Cheadle needed to get back on strike if Campbelltown Camden were any chance, but... Now that they're nine down, Cheadle basically, I think, has to face every delivery. Boundary, boundary one. Boundary, boundary. Last ball, the over one. But uh, as I said, if they can do it now from here, the Campbelltown Camden Ghost, it'll be one of those ones that'll be etched in history. As I said, with uh, 27 still required with uh, three and a half overs left here. If there were four down, you would think that they were every, they were, you couldn't bet on them. But just those wickets, the how tight the bowling's been from the Tigers. You don't need 200, playing 200 to get a good T20 game, Nick Kudnyak. You're not I mean. wrong about that. The cat makes her way to the non-strikers end. Sheetal will face. Miglio bowling. Three balls left of this over. It's nine for 81. Time ticks. 27 for a tie. 28 for victory. Miglio comes in on the back foot. Cheadle's able to punch that through the covers. Will be a single. It brings Bacat on strike. You know, obviously uh, trusting in her number 11. But it'll be interesting to see what tactics they've talked about. Still a couple of balls left in this over. Whether they look for singles, just ask her to block it out. Maybe Cheadle thinks she can go the tonk in the next over. Nine for 82. Two balls left of the Demiglio over. She's going to come around the wicket. To Bacat. On the back foot, blocks, no run. Couldn't have asked for more. The, more of a first-class thing to just block it straight back down the pitch to the bowler. Mm. Be interesting what this next delivery brings. Has to be a dog. And I think, it? and I think that the Sydney realised that. Mm. Trying to maybe manipulate it to, so they want to take a single. They said the very big gap left now at mid-wicket. Yeah, you're not wrong about that, and that's where I'd be hitting <laughs> the cat. Decides to dab it down. The fielder there at third, or well, Whitish Gully gets to it, so it'll be no run. It brings Cheadle back on strike with three overs remaining. 18 rocks. It is nine for 82. 108 the target. So it's 27 for victory, 26 to get us the super over. I have to mention that because I know Kiwi Mick <laughs> is hoping super over. Do we know what the rules are for super over, Kiwi? No, okay. I think it's the normal super over rules. No, I'm talking about what's our rule? Who calls what? Well, you get one over one each. One over each, okay, one good. Over one, one over each. Hey, I've, I've not done any ball by ball. Maybe I'll call them. No. Um. <laughs> well, we won't be getting somebody else anytime soon, JP. No chance. <laughs> JP's not like a loud back. Okay. Orders of the head of sport. Rag. Makes, his, uh, makes her way in around the Ooh. wicket. It's smashed by Cheadle. The fielder there at long on. Can't get to it. Four runs. Four runs. This is what they want, the ghost. They want Cheadle on strike as much as possible. This comes down the wicket. No respect for the bowler. And it said the fielder there at long on just had no chance of cutting that one off. The big dive came into play. Another four runs to Cheadle. 36 off 27 here. 22 required off 17. Third on the circle. Points on the circle. Extra cover. Mid off. Long on. Deep mid. Square. 
And she comes in rag. It's hooked in the air by Cheadle. It's going to be caught on the fence. Great catch. And Sydney are the T20 champions for 2023-24. They have won this by 22 runs. You can't blame Cheadle there. Trying to go the big hike, but when it's Jody Hicks there at deep mid wicket, it would have to have sailed over ahead for any chance for that not to be taken. And boy, they had almost the impossible target, didn't they, the Sydney Tigers? They had to defend 108, and they've done it in a canter. All out for 86, Hick, Campbelltown Camden. We saw them in the early game this morning, absolutely coasting a similar target. But it's been another impressive bowling effort here by the Sydney Tigers here this afternoon. And they will take home the uh, T20 Cup and that prize money from, Sin uh, from Kings Grove Sports Centre. Amazing. An amazing victory by Sydney. We'll have the presentation shortly. I don't know who's going to go down to help us out for the presentation. Well, if they can turn the tractor off, it might help us. We can turn it off. The problem is the tractor's still going because it's br bringing away the uh, sight screen. Mm. Yeah, they were on that one. They're making sure that they can save the sight screen, aren't they? So we'll have the presentation shortly. But Bacat, she ended up being not out. But Lauren Cheadle was caught at deep mid. Very disappointing end for Campbelltown. But a cracking match we have seen. We'll give you the call of the card as well, just uh, getting that up on the uh, screen now. But a terrific victory by Sydney, who are the champions. Let's go through the call of the card for Campbelltown. Bowder, Shields out, or Battler, I should say, out for 19. Caught by Longhurst, bowled by Bryson Smith. We had... Leroy, I should say, was out for two. She was LBW by Neil Bryson Smith. Rollins LBW by Neil Bryson Smith for a duck. Burton was run out by Timms, bowled by Demiglio for 11. McGurk out for a duck. She was LBW by Neil Bryson Smith. Sarah Coit was caught and bowled by Churchland for one. Hereshock was out for eight, run out by Churchland, bowled by Timms. Cheadle caught by Hicks, bowled by Rag for 36. Augustine was bowled by Demeglio for three. Baldwin, that's Kesha Baldwin, uh, Baldwin was run out by Churchland for one. And Bacat out, or not out for zero. So Sydney's bowling figures with five extras, by the way, total of 86. For Sydney, it was Bryson Smith, four overs, four for 14, three wides. Sammy Joe Johnson, three overs, no maidens, none for 27, one wide. Kira Churchland, three overs, one for 13. And then we go to Demeglio, four overs, one for 11. And Rag, 3.2, one for 20. Hicks taking one catch, Longhurst as well as Churchland. And Timms with uh, two run out assists. And Demiglio, one run-out assist, same as Churchill, one run-out assist and one run-out outright. So, Sydney have won. I know, Mizzy, I've done your thing of doing the score, <laughs> but that was because you're off mic and I had to do something. Well, as I said, we need to make sure we've uh, got our uh, all our ducks in a row. We will bring you the presentation shortly. I can see Sean Mantle uh, from Cricket New South Wales, the competitions officer for this uh, Women's Premier Cricket Competition. While I mentioned him, big thank you to Sean. He's got a set up. He always makes sure we're hooked up whenever we are commentating this competition. So big thanks to Sean um, for everything he does. But we will bring you that presentation shortly. We see the Sydney Tigers are out there in the middle um, waiting uh, for that to come out. Obviously, the uh, Campbelltown Camden Ghost probably go into the uh, yeah. dressing room and have a bit of a uh, consolidation couple of moments before they do that. But... It has been an eventful day. Obviously, we didn't get here for that first game where Campbelltown Camden took home the chocolates against uh, yeah. St. George Sutherland. Um, as I said, it was a great game for the Sydney Tigers. A big win over our local ND Rangers here on Triple H 100.1 FM in that mi mid-afternoon game. And then, yeah, this late afternoon game, this grand final. 
I said, people want to watch 200 play 200 on the TV. I'm the opposite. This was a gripping grand final. You had even the Kiwi Viz was close and everyone would probably question why. This is why. Because I said, the Sydney Tigers bowled well. They put the pressure back on the Campbelltown Camden Ghosts and they're able to get the job done easy in, in context of this game. We're just waiting for the presentation to be sorted out. So we're a couple of minutes off that, Mirzy. But the, this was fantastic. And well, Cheadle, you know, if she cleared that, we could have had a real grandstand finish. It was it was one that you get off the seat going, oh, what's going to happen here? It's been caught at the boundary. And a great catch to it, that. And as you can see, as uh, you're watching on the television broadcast on Frogbox, uh, cracking performance by Cheadle, 36 off 28. And uh, just awaiting on... Olivia Maxwell, well, we're waiting on the presentation, but Olivia Maxwell, 37 off 42. Sammy Joe Johnson, 17 off 13. Tim's 15 from 11. And Plummer, 9 from 16. That's the best for Sydney. While the bowling figures of Sarah Coyd, who was terrific, 3 for 12. Um, Bacat was 1 for 20, 1 for 24 for Cheadle. Augustine, 1 for 27. But more importantly, as I said, Sarah Coyd, well, you, you would have thought she was the bowler of the match, the way she performed, and then... Nell Bryson Smith, the old guy to hold my beer. I'll show you what I'm going to do. Four for fourteen. Well, you would have thought if uh, the the ghost got the the chocolates in the end, she would be up there for player of the match. But I think everybody knows who that will be. As uh, we wait for both teams down there, Kiwi Mix got the portable mic for us. We'll see if we can pick up that presentation for you. Yeah, um, we're just waiting for him to get himself in the position. We we don't know where is Kiwi. There he is over there. All right. He's against the fence. Oh, he's against the fence. Okay. But yeah, as I said, before we do get that presentation started, we do thank our uh, listeners, whether you're listening through Frogbox on uh, the Cricket New South Wales YouTube channel, Triple H 100.1 FM, where you'll hear us. And if you want to follow us and find out where we'll be, you can find us at Triple H Sport on uh, Facebook, X, and Instagram. X. X. I, I still can't get. That's why I always do the f- emphasis on it, so I make sure I get it right. No, I, I think of um, coming soon is Gabo, Gabo, uh, Gabo. What the hell is Gabo? Yeah, but um, also Hawkesbury, where y- yourself and Nick and, and JP, we appreciate you coming and helping us out today. Uh, MacArthur Sports Radio, Mike Sheen. I'm sure he's a little bit disappointed back at home, but I'm sure we'll. Uh, do some work, more work with him in the coming weeks and months. Yeah, and you want to go to Raby Oval next week? <laughs> He's looking for callers. JP's uh, put his hand hey, up for that one. JP, where was the place you got lost? You went all the way to the Southern Islands, didn't you? Yes, that's correct. Where was it? Where was, was it Thoreau or something? Thoreau. No, Thoreau is... Well, yeah, no, it could have been Thoreau. No, it wouldn't have been Thoreau because that's Wollongong. Where was it? Oh, JP, it wasn't Mossbar, was it? Barrel? Oh, no, Barrel's near. Yeah, you know where you go. Barrel, you know where you go. We're trying to go to the uh, Museum. Wuminda International Stadium oh, at East Campbelltown or somewhere like that. No. I could easily get lost. <laughs> well, hey, JP, you might have to have a headset when you talk next time. <laughs> just put my pretend. Oh, uh, he's got his, you know he's still talking to us like he's... Oh, anyway. I don't know. Kiwi Mick is about to help us out with the presentation, so we're just awaiting. So we're seeing the Sydney girls in front of us, and congratulations, the hugs and that, which is well-deserved. It was a great... Look, as I said, they deserved it on the day. Two pristine performances. You can't deny that. Two mm. very good performances. Yeah, not the greatest at the bat in this second game, but still they did enough, and then the ball proved dividends. A hundred percent. It's it's one of those ones, and as we said, it was going to be fifty fifty in that uh, in that um, second innings. A low total. We'd seen the Sydney Tigers keep the Rangers to a low total in the game previously. We saw Campbelltown Camden chase something similar with ease. It was going to be fifty fifty. I said it could have easily have gone the other way. Um, had had maybe a, a few things gone that the ghosts in those 50-50s that we saw. But as I said, it was an entertaining game of, of cricket and we've got a very worthy winner of that uh, Kingsgrove Sports Centre T20 Cup that we can see down here in front of the uh, Cricket Central Pavilion. Um, as if you are watching on Frogwoods, we are trying to pick it up, but for whatever reason, we do still have the uh, 
We do have the uh, the graphics. The we graphics can't do anything up. about that. No, but we will keep. If you are watching on Frogwest, thank you. We will keep going and take this presentation. We're just waiting for everybody to. Uh, we actually don't know how to actually get rid of the graphics. No, well, that's not done by us. So no, no it's not. It's, yeah, it's a frog uh, box thing. Mm. So it's when there must must be like an end of over thing or something. I don't know. Well, it's an end of game thing because it's obviously it recognizes yeah. that it's 10, yeah. 10 for eighty six. Yeah. But at least we keep the feed because as I said if the feed drops, it's because they hit end of game. But uh, we are we are still okay. We are still coming through loud and clear through YouTube. Looks like we're just getting the uh, covers on. By the way. Well, I would have the covers on too, looking at the sky, not looking yeah. at your radar, whatever you've brought no, up No, the radar, no, so, so we'll look at the radar before. <laughs> so I'm going to pull this back up because it's a load of cod swallop. <laughs> it's a load of cod swallop. I'll say that, first of all, the forecast is a load of cod swallop. You know what, I might as well get a job at uh, Bomb. And at least now they are okay with us calling them the Bomb. You work, you work for Sky, you can just go to Sky Weather. Get a I work transfer. for Sky Sports Radio. I work at the racing. I don't work anywhere near. <laughs> you know, the, there's nowhere. There's nowhere near rain around here. I have eyes. I can look up in I the know, sky. I know. I can see that too. <laughs> but I'm only just going by that. Okay. I can see too. Like as I said, I could be a weatherman and guess. It's called guesstimating. It's from like seven in the morning. Yeah. Well, it's not my fault that I haven't updated it yet. <laughs> Terry Hills must be on Smoko or something. I don't know. Have you ever been to Terry Hills? You don't want to. That's it. The old Radio Northern Beaches uh, studios and at it Terry was, Hills. And it was it was filmy, by the way. It was filmy, JP. I've just got um, yeah, Mike just messages, <laughs> and he also said get stuffed for some reason. I don't know why. Anyway, presentation. Let's we get love out you, there. Mike. Don't t don't t don't say that. Love you. I'd like to thank to Kingsborough Sport. We have sponsored the Kingsborough Sport. Thank you. Thank you. Groundskeepers who have um, gotten this game, you know, ready for us in this beautiful ground. Uh, I'd like to thank the clubs who have, um, who have pulled their teams together. It's no small feat to put a team into a final. Um, there's coaches, volunteers and supporters who would have put all sorts of effort in, along with the players, really, you know, putting all of themselves into a winner game. It's by no accident. Um, so I'd like to thank them and I'd like to thank our scorers and um, umpires who have uh, um, coordinated everything today. I think you've done a, a wonderful job. Um, and I'd like to uh, invite um, Bob McGregor and Dave Stewart up to present the player of the match. Good, thanks very much. Thanks. Thanks, Catherine. Uh, wonderful to be involved in this um, match. Congratulations to both sides. A really enjoyable match for us as umpires played in excellent spirit. Um, the player of the match today is Nell Bryson Smith. A fine selection. Now you had amazing stats today. Um, and I'd like to um, welcome uh, Kelly Rowlings from Campbelltown up to say a few words. Uh, and we'll also present uh, Campbelltown with uh, a check from Kings Grove Sport. You've done an amazing job to make sure that. Um, I won't. I won't run through the complete list. I'm going to forget someone. So Kira will say thanks to everyone. I forgot. She's always got my back. Um, thanks to yeah, Cricket New South Wales for hosting and the groundies for getting us on. Um, thanks to umpires, scorers, volunteers, coaches, etc. I reckon we'll leave it at that. Um, to our girls, uh, unlucky today. Unfortunately, it just wasn't our day. I think we showed a lot of heart and coming in fourth in the competition to make the grand final. Winning the 1v4 as 4 is always very fun. So I think we can be proud of ourselves for getting here. Um, to Kira and all 40 of you, um, <laughs> congrats, well done. I think, I think we just got outplayed today. Um, we'll get you in the one day as see you there. <laughs>
Um, I'll now invite um, Kira Churchland from Sydney up to say a few words. Yeah, Kazi! Okay. Yeah. You can say a few words, then we'll give you a giant check. Oh, okay. Yeah. Outside voice. Oh, I don't even really need this. So. Outside voice. <laughs> yeah, this is it. Uh, so firstly, I'd like to thank Sean and Cricket New South Wales for um, putting on this competition for us. Um, thank you for everyone that gave up their public holidays today to come and support both teams. Campbelltown did a really good job. It's not often you see a final with third and fourth in the uh, ladder playing, so a really good job there, girls. Um, to our team, as Kelly said, like all 40 of us, uh, there's not that many, thankfully. There's 39. Um, 39, yeah, that's right. Um, thank you for everyone turning up and supporting us, those girls that came to run drinks for us or run our helmets. Um, our coaching staff, so Ross, Michael Ho, Greg Healy, thank you very much. Parents, Awesome, score is fantastic. We had a really good day up in the air conditioning, I heard, so that was really good. And to all six umpires uh, that helped uh, officiate the games today, thank you very much. So as they had the photo with the novelty check, we love a novelty check here. They can send one up to the commentary box if they oh, like. You know, I've always wanted to buy one on eBay. A nobody check. I want to buy one of the. Why? No, I want to buy a supercars one. The pole, uh, the uh, pole position. Yeah, I'll get one of those. I actually want the Viking hat. They used to have pretty armor old pole. Anyway, they've given the um, they're giving the medals now to the players. And can I just say, we we called it up here. We knew it was going to be Neil Bryson Smith for her bowling performance. And, and I joke when I say it was all about hold my beer sort of thing, but really it was just a great bowling performance. It, it certainly was, and, and particularly coming on as a spinner with the new ball, we, yeah, we do see it a lot more in the women's game than in the men's, but there was something for the spinners in this cricket central pitch. We said a lot of these grounds we go to, you don't see that grip and turn. A lot of, a lot of balls like that will just go on with the arm. But here, it just offered just enough for the left arm orthodox. And just to have that many in, a, in that short space of time hitting the stumps, um, very impressive. And that's really what kick-started the Tigers to taking home the uh, Kingsgrove Cup here this afternoon. So somehow we got our sound effects uh, or the sideline mic uh, working again after just stopping for a couple of seconds. It's like somebody stepped on it. Uh, we can hear in the background... Uh, the noise. Probably running out of battery. Well, it probably is because he hasn't charged it. Well, it's not. It's a couple you know of double I mean. A's. Yeah, a couple, couple of double, double A's. A's. Yeah, we haven't used it in that long. Have you heard the joke about the double A's? I don't think I want to. I like no, it's the one on where it's a, it's a double A um, convention. It's just a whole bunch of batteries together. It's one of the greatest photos ever. I know. Callum's just laughing. He's head off going, that's just poor. You can have him. You can have him then. Well, JP's laughing and just absolutely well, that's <laughs> smiling. Not surprising. Great, great job, by the way, everybody. It's a good day, good fun. Australia Day. We enjoy calling the cricket. It was great. Well, we'll just watch here. Let's is, listen um, to this. When they lift this trophy high. <laughs> First the photo. And now the team all hold it high in the air. Listen to the roar from the players when this happens. There's no drinks in there yet, but about five <laughs> minutes from now, there'll be a couple there. They're going to walk onto the field. Okay, so what sort of thing they're going to do here? This is interesting. Well, they, they're obviously getting uh, one of a, a friend friend of uh, Triple H, Ian Bird, uh, the, yeah. the photographer. They're obviously, saving their uh, big performance while uh, they can get him on, uh, so they can get it on his camera. Okay. They haven't put any liquid in the trophy yet, just to know. Uh, important. All right, well, that concludes the formalities. Is that the presentation? Probably a thousand photos after this. Thank you, everyone, for coming out. Okay, yeah. so yeah. first, let's listen to this, and then we'll get Callum on. Well, yes. Hopefully, Kiwi Mink leaves the microphone on for us. No, he's getting the microphone and walking away, but that's okay, because we'll hear it from the, the crowd microphone right now. As they're, they're throwing the check around. Come on, you can't bank that at the Bank of New South Wales. You can't bank a check anywhere. Yes, you can. Yeah, you can. Well, at the post office. I heard a story about 
It checks in a second. I've got to talk about this story. Oh, here we important. go. Yeah, I'm going to deep on. Any, any talking you do just delays the pit box by another couple of minutes. Oh, that is true. <laughs> uh, extended edition. Uh, on that note, they're still taking the photos before they actually hoist the trophy aloft. So, you know it checks, right? And this is important, and I know, Callum, you won't debunk this, but apparently, as here it is, they're doing the yay, 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 yay. If you write the 20, like the 2030, 2023, apparently the checks don't bounce yet. If you've written it in 2024, if you've written 2023, it's a 30-day 30 30 thing, and then they officially say you've stuffed up the check. Apparently. Well, good, I've... I've sent my system into a bit of a meltdown not, not what writing, you 20, writing 23 instead of 24. Oh, so. Don't do that. No, I can break a lot of things. All right, I think we, we, we might leave. Um, we're just hearing now the photo's still being done. They're taking 4,000. They certainly are. They said, as you would. Yeah. you got, you got the best in the business, Ian Bird, down there. I'd be taking as many as possible. We'll see if we can put a link up to those in our socials. They'll come up... Uh, at some point later this evening when uh, Mr. Bird loads them up for us. Are you right there, Mr. Queen? Yeah, can I, can I, can we go home now? Or? No, I was waiting for you to wrap it up. Well, I am going to wrap it up. And no, it's I was a, literally waiting for you to wrap up. Oh, uh, yeah, I thought you were going to take that off me as well. No. But um, as I said, it has been a great day. Whether you're listening on Frogbox through Cricket New South Wales, through Triple H 100.1 FM, Hawkesbury Radio, MacArthur Sports Radio. We really appreciate it. We hope you will uh, join us again at some point soon. We might be back calling um, some of the other representative grand finals. Obviously, we need to uh, make sure that we can uh, have some availability for those. If you do like what you've heard, have not heard us before, you can follow us, Triple H Sport, on Facebook, X, and Instagram, and you can find out where we'll be. We'll be calling lots of rugby leagues starting at the beginning of March, plus other sports as well. We'll keep you abreast on that on our social media. But as I said, for the team, JP, thank you very much. Bring your zany personality to the commentary box. Kiwi Mink, the legend, the best ball-by-ball ball man, plus with the radio mic as well. <laughs> we're taking, not, we're taking him off. off. Yeah. <laughs> We've unplugged you. Sorry, Mick. But... Um, <laughs> Always, always a pleasure to have you. Callum, mate, Sunday nights with Callum, 6 o'clock on Triple H 100.1 FM. Nick Kutnyak, here, there and everywhere. Mate, a pleasure to have you along as well. Andrew Russell, our producer, thank you very much for everything that you do for us. We appreciate it as always. And my, from myself, Matt Mears, we thank you for your listenership. Stay tuned next for the Pit Box. Then the Hot 30 with Maddie will be coming up after that. Maybe a little bit past 8 o'clock um, as we get to the pit box a bit later than normal. But as I said, from the team, thank you very much for your listenership here from Cricket Central. Cam- uh, Sydney Tigers are your premiers beating Campbelltown Camden in the final. And from the team, we'll see you down the road here on Triple H on Hawkesbury and wherever you're taking our call. Bye for now. Where we're supposed to applaud ourselves. Oh, yeah. Yay! Cheers. Thank you very much.